these started. Uh, some of the audio levels I was telling Ben and Becky uh, uh, before you hopped in, uh, Justin, um, mm -hmm. are going to be off a little bit. I, I changed some sound settings, so when I first... Well, why'd you go and do that? <laughs> it was some, some adjustments that I needed to make anyway, and I'm actually moving, eventually I'll be moving all of the sound over to a second. <sighs> right now it's all on the laptop, but anyways, so some of the stuff might be a little bit loud, just uh, volume. Don't, don't adjust it in Discord, just tell me if it's loud so that I can adjust it on my side instead. Um, just for... for uh, uniformity's sake, I guess it's a lot easier to do that because if you turn it down too much and then you might not hear other things so it's easy for me to adjust my side. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Alright. Uh, quick, Ben, Becky, you guys sitting down? Ready to go? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Uh, adjust the lighting there too. There hey, Ben and Becky, uh, can you talk a little bit in your mics? Because I couldn't hear you when you said anything. There you go. Hello. Better? Uh, yours is better, but uh, Becky's is super quiet on my end. What about yours, Jeremy? Well, uh, they're, th I just adjusted them on my side, actually. So uh, how to do that in Discord, right-click on the left where it says Becky under the D&D channel. Turn her volume up? Yeah, there's a little slider bar. You can bump Got it, it to 200. Becky, can you read uh, like a sentence in uh, one of the channels there? S sing us a song, Becky. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> I don't sing in public. <laughs> All right, that sounds a lot better, by the way. Yeah, the, the sometimes, especially when I make changes on my side, we end up having to kind of dial in the audio a little bit, so no big deal. So, all right, uh, quick before, so uh, as you guys were still at the docks and everything, um, the, you know, the, the previous night, basically, uh, Norak had asked Samson about his racism. Remember? Yep. Uh, I guess be specific then. What is it that you were asking him? I mean, you you just say, "Hey, are you a racist?" Or, or like, was it something you know more elaborate? Than that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's un even even <laughs> fakely, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna try to be a little bit more tactful. I was just gonna say, uh, <laughs> just, just uh, say I, I noticed your disdain for the the elf and the the short one. So, may I ask where I that comes from? I like picturing Norok trying to be like super discreet and tasteful. Like, <laughs> I should just pick him up. Excuse me, good know. sir. Can we have a <laughs> private moment <laughs> to discuss up. race relations in the world of Ur? <laughs> uh, this is me off. I'll just smash him. So. He grabs a little a jaunty hat with a feather in it before he makes the final thing. Norok <laughs> like little people. You know like little people. <laughs> Norok know not why. Um, he he kind of gives you kind of a sideways glance at first like it seems like he's you know kind of put put it back a little bit by the question um and uh he says um you know what he says he says all right well w while we were marching out here you told me that your people aren't of a devout faith right like you, you guys have your, your stonehead gods but the yog don't seem to live every day in service to, to any form of you know a divine uh, being right no not, not necessarily he kind of nods for a second. He says, "He says, there's a verse in the proofs. Um, I know you, your, your folk probably aren't too familiar with this, but it's something that I've, you know, I've, I've lived my life by. And it says that let every person be subject to the governing authorities, uh, for all authority comes from Etch, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by him. And, and that is to say that, that to my people we've been ordained by Etch himself to rule over the lesser peoples of the world. So, I, I mean, I struggle personally with the governing choices that the Empire makes, allowing non-humans the same rights and freedoms as their rightful betters. Um, but I do sometimes see my patients wear thin with the sharp ears and the rock diggers and the midges, though, and, and I must atone for that. Um, so your criticism of my behavior is right, and, and it's appreciated. Um, you know, the, the proofs often speak of, of loving and protecting the wretched, so I should, I should try harder at that, to be honest. Yeah, well, I know we all... Uh have our own personal reasons for things, so yeah, I understand. Just, just curious. Just wanted to know. Yeah, I don't have a better answer for you. Fair enough. Honesty is all I care about. So, thank you. He just kind of nods and goes back to. He was sharpening his his sword. Uh, he's already doffed his gear, by the way. Um, especially, you know, a long day of, of marching down the down the slope uh, in his in his armor, as well as the, carrying those plates over his shoulders off and on, especially after. You know the the fight at the uh, at the old abandoned house there. Um, you know he'd been carrying it ever since and hadn't really allowed you to to hold it since. So 
Um, he does seem to have been calmed a little bit, though. Doesn't seem as much of a, of a jerk. Maybe he was just in a bad mood because of all of that. Um, but, you know, that's that's really up to Sarah and Artemis' understanding, I guess, of how, how dicky she's being. Um, I had a small bit for Sarah's, or for Artemy as well, but uh, I guess the question then I had for Sarah specifically, as far as a quick primer before we get back to, like, the now. Uh, the salve that Artemy gave you, did you apply it immediately? What'd you do? Uh, yeah, as soon as she made it, I would have gone in my tent and applied it. Okay, all right, that's what I was asking, is if you, specifically if you were hiding it or in the tent or what, so, okay. All right, then, uh, where we actually left off, uh, normally, by the way, Justin, we don't usually have to, we don't usually have to kind of rewind time like that. Most of the time it's handled sure. in pacing. Uh, that was just because last session I was trying to kind of get to the, the not cliffhanger, but the kind of end point of the session. Uh, sure. And, and didn't want to, you know, force it too hard. So those are just things that we kind of jump back to is all. You know, something I've learned is you never want to force it too hard, Jeremy. <laughs> just right. Yeah. Keep it just right. All right, so uh, where we left off, though, uh, Norok heard the splashing beside the ship, went over to look over the, the side to see uh, some of the... Uh, you guys don't know the name of these things, but uh, these uh, kind of fish-like people. Uh, do you still have the VA? Do you guys need the VA? Do you remember what they look like and everything? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, oh, Justin, VAs... When you see a VA... Oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put it up, actually, just for Justin to see it. Um, I guess he probably, you probably saw it last week anyways, Justin, didn't you? Uh, I don't recognize the acronym. Okay, so VA, that's that's actually why I was going to bring that up. VA, anytime you see um, an image, I usually tag them like this. So yeah. when you see an image, you'll see in the top left corner in brackets there, there's VA. It just stands for sure. visual aid. Um, they're usually just, you know, this is what this creature looks like, or this is what the, you know, this is what the area looks like that you guys are in, things like that. Um, yeah. Just kind of set dress. So we, we know it's, well, at least I don't know, but you guys know it's some sort of fish guy. Well, you're about to know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, but yeah, and actually I can, like the name where it says Sea Devil, I can actually, as soon as you guys figure out what it is, there's a button I can press on my side that will change the name to what they actually are in all of it. So like in the combat tracker and all that kind of shit. Uh, but anyway, so when you see that VA tag, it's basically just here's set dressing. This is generally what it looks like. You don't need to leave those up. Once you, once you have it, basically you can close it if you want. If you ever want to bring one back up for any image that's been shared with you on the right side you'll see a button that says image. image yeah you click that and then anything that has a little p next to it basically you can click it again uh, to bring it back up oh. um, that works for maps and everything too stuff. yeah so okay. uh, that's that's all stuff that's been shared to to them already uh like region maps and things like that um i'm actually about to share you guys the uh the, this map here and i'll explain how this works for justin as well now the alternative of course to when you guys see oh i gotta change the uh the uh, yes, that's port. Um, this is the the map now. It's not for individual ships. This will be something relatively new for Justin too, of course. Uh, Justin, you're down at the very bottom. Uh, don't spin that. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anything, but uh, that that token there, I, I put that in so that you guys know which direction is port and which is starboard and so on. Um, it's just a token, so it, it's movable and everything. I didn't want to lock the tokens, so. Um, anyways, that's not four individual ships. That's basically each floor of the ship. Does that make sense? Yep. So if you, uh, Justin, you're down at the bottom. You're you're on the basically the bottom deck of Oops. the ship. Sorry. Um, you're fine. Uh, and Ben and Fox and, and Becky are up top along with Samson. I also changed Samson's token too, by the way. So just because he was really hard to see with the old one, uh, so I just changed it to another same same general idea. All right. So we'll right. get started here uh, with Pogo. Oh, fine. So, middle of the night, uh, Pogo, you've been asleep. Uh, quick question, does Pogo sleep with the lights on? Did he leave a lantern or a candle or anything going in, in his chamber, in his cabin, or, or is it dark? Yeah, you know, Pogo has a little trouble sleeping sometimes. So, yeah, he, he sleeps with a little light on, like a, just a lantern. Okay, all right. Then you're woken in the middle of the night uh, and see uh, just a, a deafening crash of splitting wood. Um, and you see a, a like a, a like scaly fist, basically, just, just hitting the door over and over again. Uh, oh, that's not great. <laughs> uh, followed by uh, the sounds of another splitting, a similar splitting from the cabin next door, uh, and which which you hear like just crash all the way through. You hear a what the before a wet stab, um, and like a terrified groan. Um, it's, which is obviously the sound of someone being stabbed through the gut is what it sounds like. Uh, you've only got a second to react. What are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna get up and grab my weapon out, my rapier. Okay. Um, you 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 don't have. Armor. Wait, you're wearing light armor, yeah. Uh, does he yeah, sleep in his armor? Because that's. I think uh, for the light armor, I, I think he probably would. Uh, so, especially since he 
doesn't sleep very well, so he's probably just laying there okay. in his clothes. Um, for we'll, we'll come back to this for for future games and so on. But basically, sleeping in armor has its own def it, it can cause penalties essentially. In light armor, right. it's not as big of a deal. But uh, generally, you wouldn't because it can cause exhaustion, meaning you just don't sleep. Ah. Very well. um, but for for this particular case, don't worry about it. It's just for future reference. Um, but you're woken up, obviously, in this way, and give me initiative. All right. You hop up out of bed and you grab your rapier, uh, seeing you know this this scaly fist. Uh, it's about probably a little above eye level for you, uh, where it's splitting into the door. Uh, the door kind of crashes open and up, and you can see this fish thing uh, standing in the doorway. All right, just to double check, just double click on my initiative, right? Uh, yeah, where it says INIT. Oh, we need to change your color again. Oh, I didn't... Just because you moved to, your, to the computer in the office, right? Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. So, give me one second, I'll give you your number here. It is BF three EFF. Uh, let me turn the other one down here. EF. Let's delete all the zeros. BF three. BF three EFF. F. Yep. Is that the color? Was it purple? Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, Dark orchid one, I think, was the number. That sounds right. Okay. Uh, you beat him in the initiative order, so it is your turn. Uh, this will be, real quick, guys, uh, for Ben and Becky uh, and Fox, when she gets here, too. Uh, this will be a little bit on the confusing side, too, but we'll be initially uh, kind of go just for, for kind of helping uh, initiate uh, uh, Justin here. We'll be going through Pogo's section of it, but you guys will still be seeing events that are happening at the top of the ship where you guys are. Um, we just won't be adding you to the combat tracker just yet. Does that make sense? Cool. You guys will be yeah. fine. Like you, you guys understand how things work, so this won't be. I just don't want to like have half an hour between ju between Justin's turns because of all the other shit that's going on. So. Yeah. So you just take. Well, he's on a separate level anyway. So you're just taking care of his scenario first, and then we're doing stuff on the top. You know, at the same time. But we'll yeah. get to that later. Yeah. You guys yeah. are still acting up there, and we're just we're just going to assume that you're kind of acting in whatever way that your characters would. You're not going to lose any HPs or anything like that for it. But we'll jump up to yeah. you as soon as, as soon as Justin's part is finished. So. It won't take long. Anyways, so Justin, you you uh, were able to kind of hop up, grab your uh, rapier, and, and ready yourself for this fish man that just knocked the door down. Uh, Fox is okay. So he, he has knocked the whole door down. Then he's he's split it open and pushing and pushing his way through. There's two halves of the door, left and right, basically vertically, All right. and it's, it's kind of pushed into the doorway, standing in front of you. All right. Well, um, I think I'm probably gonna have to just. Let's use... I'm going to go ahead and use Vicious Mockery. Okay. Hey, Fox. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Sound is fine. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, right, no, so. I had... Uh, I had Monk message you last on the road. Oh, that was him? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, can you take, like, tablet and message? <laughs> nice. Okay, so just to remember, I hit cast first to make sure it'll hit, right? Uh, you have him targeted now, so you hit the ambitious mockery. You would hit the, if you hit the magnifying glass to the right of it, mm -hmm. then you and hit, they the hit cast. The top, yeah, and that'll make him roll his save. So he rolled a twelve. Normally, like I told you before, I don't always give the number, but because you're brand new, we'll be going over this a little bit just to familiarize you with the mechanics some more. Um, that's still really loud on my side. I just turned it down a little bit more. Um, anyways, he rolled a 12 plus 1 is a 13, which does not beat your DC of a 16. So he fails at it, uh, which means you are going to go ahead and hit him with the damage, and the and then you'll hit the effect. Since you have him targeted, it'll automatically apply that to him. So I do damage. There you go. That's a good roll. And then Attack. I hit effect. Yep. And now he had. And what was it that you? How how did you go about mocking him? Oh, uh, I said, "What you doing, you scaly bastard? Breaking in my room while I'm taking a nap." <laughs> uh, you you see his uh, uh, you know what Piscine is, right? <laughs> no. So so uh, you know, canine means dog, feline means cat. Oh, Pisces. That fish. is fish. Yeah. Right. So you see, you see his. Uh, I'm like, yeah, he's gonna. What is he gonna attack me with his Pisces, or is he trying to get me into? <laughs> what is it? He's pulled down his pants and shows me his Pisces. <laughs> it does kind of sound like it's it's a fish joke. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> uh, uh, his eyes kind of go wide, and and, and uh, as his, as he gets a blast of the headache of, of the psychic damage from this. Um, it doesn't. It didn't knock him out or anything, but it certainly looks wounded from it. Um, these don't look all that healthy, but they are quite large. They're just fragile. Sure. So he's probably six and a half, six, uh, around six feet tall. 
So for you, you know, double your height, basically. You're, you'd be looking right at this Piscine at your, at your height. So, all right, that if your turn. Any bonus actions? Uh, let's see. Let me just double check. You can rotate your token, too. So if you mouse over your token and then use the mouse wheel to change direction that you're facing, that kind of stuff. Uh, I can't move to the space behind me, right? Because that's like half in the water. Well, so, like so each of each square is five feet. That means technically that side of it would, you know, that corner of it would be about three feet, three and a half. Maybe there's plenty of room for you over there. Yeah, it's basically you're I... still you're still on the bed right now. So if you hop backwards, you'll just be kind of standing on the bed uh, against the wall. Um, do I think I'm. I'm gonna stay on the bed. Okay. Oh, can I, can I go like that or yeah. like this? Either, either's fine. Generally, right. try. Normally, if basically if you can be in a in a full square, then be in a full square. In this particular case, right where you're at is fine. It's basically just up against the wall. So. All right. Okay. So, I'll. I think that's it for my turn. Okay. So I forgot what I clicked though. Uh, combat tracker. Do you have the combat tracker and the map both up, and your character sheet. I that's what I needed, the combat tracker. Yeah. Uh, click that. That's what I needed. And then I click the arrow, right? Yep, bottom yeah. left corner. There you go. All right. And uh, Fox, since you hopped in, we, we only just got started. Um, the we, we, oh. you, know, um, you didn't miss anything. Uh, basically, what we're going to do, since it's since you know Justin is still learning this, um, you guys are still at the top on the deck here. I'm going to go ahead and share the map to you again, actually, Fox. And I'll need to change okay. the lighting again, I think. Uh, let me know when you have that. It's still partially loading, unless you have something, like, still... There's a bunch of it grayed out, so check in the top right. That's where you guys are. Okay, there's a bunch grayed out. I don't see myself on it, but I guess I'm... Uh, it's not, it shouldn't be a whole lot of it. It's basically a couple of sections of it. Oh, right okay, out. there we go. I just had to zoom out. Oh, okay. So, like, there's four different boats. I guess it's different levels. Yeah, exactly. And... Just different, different okay. decks. Yeah. Okay. So, I had to just zoom out to find the one I'm on. Okay. So, oops. Uh, <laughs> rotating tents. Uh, we'll hurry. I think it's fine. Uh, you guys, yeah, are up on the top. Uh, Pogo, uh, Justin's character here, is in the, in the, the lowest deck. He's far underwater, basically. Um, so... Because I don't want to, there, there will be a lot. Oh, well, without spoiling anything, there's going to be a lot of these fish guys, as you know. We heard last week, of course, when uh, Norok saw at least a dozen of them off the side of the ship. And I don't want to have, you know, 15 turns before we get back to Justin's turn, uh, because he's brand new. So we're going to be like, you guys are still up there and still acting, uh, but we'll be getting back to you guys in just a second here. So we're just, you know, you'll you'll still be kind of seeing things occurring. I'll explain all that here in a minute. Uh, but we'll basically get to to you guys here shortly, just uh, so that we're not leaving Justin. Uh, kind of not sure what to do with with this stuff here. Um, so anyways, we'll be coming back to you in just a second here. I just wanted to make sure you had the map and everything ready. Okay. All right. Why are my dice black all of a sudden? That doesn't make sense. All right. Anyway. That's that's racist, Jeremy. <sighs> black dice. Um, black dice matters. All right. This, the, the one in the doorway here that you just uh, uh, mocked, uh, he doesn't seem to understand you, what you've said. Uh, but is immediately comes charging through the doorway here with his with his little trident spear kind of a thing, uh, sure. And is trying to uh, just just like in a charging motion, like basically as one large uh, 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 thrust to try to stab you through the gut and into the wall, uh, which is basically what you hear heard happen in the cabin next door to you, the one that you can see revealed there. Uh, Sounds about right. So he is going to try to stab at you. Uh, you do have, just as a reminder, you can use if you choose to, you can use your cutting words to reduce his chances of actually hitting you. Which would mean dodging out of the way, that kind of thing. Yeah, actually, that's what I was going to do. It's my, it's a reaction, right? Yeah, so, it, it, so he he is coming at you. Which why did he have disadvantage? Oh, duh. You, because never of mind. The part, well, okay, so you don't even need to because you because it's already vicious mockery. Yeah, he missed because of the disadvantage. He actually would have hit otherwise. Um, but you can use when you choose to use your vicious or your uh, cutting words. You can use it after the the roll is made, which means you didn't waste it. So, yeah. yeah, so basically, it, because I can I can do the reaction after I know if the attack's going to hit, but before I know how much damage it's going to do. Technically, after the roll is made, not necessarily whether you know it's hit or not, but it, oh, it, right. in this case, it doesn't matter. Um, usually, the, the, the math is done automatically by Fantasy Ground, so I'll almost always tell you anyways. 
So he uh, he tries to spear uh, at you, and you just hop out of the side, and the spear kind of sticks into the wood of the ship bus or beside you. Uh, I like to imagine that I just jump on the bed real quick. <laughs> well, you were already up there anyway. I know. No, I mean ball. jump on the bed like a six-year-old. Oh. And get some height. <laughs> okay, and he just spears underneath you, so you had to follow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I fall to the side of it. Um, up, up top, uh, you guys have Norok and, and Artaman Fox, you guys, uh, and Samson, of course. You guys see these sea devils everywhere pouring over the sides of the ship. Um, you see them spilling down the stairs, uh, just like a, like a river just spilling down the stairs that lead below decks. Um, you guys can't actually see where they're going. You just see them kind of heading towards where the stairs were. Um, you see one that is climbed, climbed over the side is holding a jagged, kind of a, looks like it's a knife made out of a shell, and he's carving through rigging, uh, trying to bring down the sails. Uh, we'll come back to this, but like I said, you guys will still be kind of seeing what's going on above. Uh, it is back to your turn then, uh, Pogo. Oops. Oh, back to me? All right. Yep. Well, let's see. Now that he's got his trident stuck in the wall, I'm going to go ahead and... Can I move around him by jumping on this table and down? Yeah. All right. Let's do that. This map got really shitty quality when I, I had to reduce the quality because it's so big. Usually I have the, the art looks a little better than this. It's just all pixelated. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to stand on this chair since I'm a tiny little person. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and just do a standard attack here with... Ah, son of a... With your rapier? I'm going to go ahead and just use my rapier. Okay. I'm going to stab... I'm going to be stabbing at his back. Just a nice big target. Okay. Somewhere where I hope his fish heart might be. All right. So let's see. First, just to confirm. Targeted. You have him targeted. So if you scroll up to the top of your act actions tab there, to the right of your I go. So do I click where it says plus, uh, plus the seven. dexterity roll okay. to this term? All right. No. So nope. So the nope. That's oh, not right. You did the right one. Yeah, you did the right okay. one. Okay. And then I double and click on. Uh, you. Oh. You had him. Targeted? Why did that? Oh, it did. Never mind. It just did it in the wrong order. But yeah, you, you did it right. It just on my side, it showed in the wrong order. Okay. And then I just click where it has the damage, and then that will show me how much damage it does to him. Correct. All right. Um, <laughs> cool. You you spin around after his spear is kind of stuck in the wall, and he's yanking on it, trying to pull it out of the wall. Sure. Um, you hop around over to the table on one foot, and then over to the chair with the other foot, and just rotate around in pirouette style, and just kind of stab him <laughs> through the back with the. Uh, uh, with the rapier, and and uh, you can feel like he, his body kind of goes goes rigid and solid for a second, like you you know like this this clearly went through the heart. It feels like you pull it out, and he kind of like spins and looks at you with his very fish uh, uh, fish eyed uh, look, and just kind of collapses over on your bed, dead. All right. Okay. Uh, so obviously he won't have a turn here, uh, but we'll be coming back around to uh, like I said to the party up top. Uh, up top, remember each turn is six seconds, so this is kind of each of these uh, things are occurring in, in, in uh, spans of six seconds. Same, yeah. Uh, uh, you hear half a dozen more splitting crashes uh, and screams from the cabins all around and on the deck above you. Uh, through the doorway, you see another six foot tall uh, sea devil trudge by, um, and he kind of turns and looks at you over his shoulder, uh, but just keeps walking off to, to where the stairs are. Um, and he's got a, a bloody and lifeless human woman's body thrown over one spiny shoulder, but he just doesn't pay you any mind. He just walks by, and then you hear him kind of going around the corner, and you, you hear the, the kind of wet sounds of him flopping up the stairs. Uh, for up top, uh, above decks, uh, you guys uh, hear screams uh, from below decks as passengers and crew are being killed. Um, Halfling crewmen uh, wielding worn cutlasses and mauls that are being cut down all around you. Uh, they're clearly fighting a, a losing battle against the fishermen here. Um, but, uh, Norak, you see uh, Orvin, who is over on the quarter deck, which is across from you guys, basically. Um, on the far side of the ship, basically, but, but eye level with you. Uh, you see him over there fighting off a pair of fishermen. Um, he threw a, a net over one of them, and then it kind of swings a hammer and, uh, into another one into its head, and you hear this kind of cracking sound of the, of the hammer swing, and this, this kind of a crunch sound that's audible all the way from where you are, and just a gout of, of blood just splashes onto the deck. Um, there, he's fighting them off pretty well. Most of the halflings don't seem to be doing too well. Um, a lot, you, you basically, it seems like they're not going to succeed uh, without your guys' intervention. Uh, it is back to Pogo's turn. What are you doing? Um, I can't tell on this map. Is that supposed to be a chest in the corner? Is that where uh, I'm That's assuming where you would keep your stuff basically? Got it. Yeah, I'm like I don't think they just put a treasure chest like in my room. Well, there it's a chest. It's a, like a trunk. What you would put your stuff in while you're staying in here. Okay. Uh, 
In that case, since the guy just walked out, uh, I'm gonna go get my stuff from the chest. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you, you were. We are kind of quickly, uh, as quickly as I can do this. <laughs> I'm gonna grab the stuff from my chest. All right. You open it up. You grab your your back or your backpack uh, and throw it gear. over your shoulder. All your gear. Uh, grab everything that that you own out of this room. Uh, you are free to act. You are kind of. We're temporarily out of initiative order. So what are you doing? Uh, I'm Both actually open in front of you. Oh yeah, I'm actually going to use uh, my hat of disguise to disguise myself as that fish guy that just tried to break in, huh. or that I just murdered. <laughs> Can I do that? Uh, let's see. I think the limit is one foot. Let me let me check. One foot. It's my height. bad. Uh, no, you're, you're yeah, so you're fine there. It's uh. Uh, you can seem one foot shorter or taller than you can appear uh, thin, fatter in between. So you can make yourself look like a four foot two fish man, which you've seen two so far. And both of them were uh, the one that walked by the doorway was a little bit shorter than the one that you stabbed and is laying on your bed dead. So there, there is variance in height there. You just will still seem on the short side potentially. From what yeah, I'm still going to still going to do it. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have adopted the shape of a fish man carrying a rapier and a backpack. Uh, that is, you know, a little on the short side. What are you doing? Sure. Uh, do, 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 do. I only moved five feet. Uh, go ahead and put so, the, this guy's self effect on yourself, too. Alright, so. Uh, click the magnifying glass to the right of it and then hit the effect button. There you go. Now remember, the rest of the crew now think you're hostile, so keep that in mind. Well, luckily I can take it off if I need to. <laughs> Uh, do, 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 but I'm going to go out here. I'll see five. Ten. We're gonna go right here. We're, we're out of initiative order at the moment, so t at least temporarily. So you can pretty much move freely. Right, oh, so out here. Oh, yeah. So it, it, just because they're you're not immediately engaged in combat at the moment, although we're still this is kind of a half point between it being an initiative and not, uh, only because you don't have a ton of free time because there's obviously people dying all around. Well. You. Mostly, I want to come out here and then take a look around to see what's going on on the rest of the deck. Okay. Uh, you can see uh, the cabins back here, which is where most of the screaming is coming from. Um, the doors have been smashed. You see splinters and, and then pools of blood beginning to spill out uh, along the, the cabins in the back here. I'm revealing more of this as we go here. Um, but there's basically fish people. Uh, you, you see multiple back here. Um, you don't see... You don't know how effective you would be at trying to help them at the moment, just because there's so many oh. of them that you could get swarmed pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, if there's a, a ton of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just go up the stairs. Okay. All right. So you rush your way up the stairs. Go ahead and move yourself over to them. Uh, in fact, actually, never mind. You'll be here. So move yourself to Got the stairs on, on the second deck above. There you go. In uh, here, you see similarly there are uh, these fish people all around. Um, you can see a little bit down this hallway here. Um, more doors being smashed open, more more of them all around. Uh, there is another uh, set of stairs. You you came down here before, so you haven't actually, you can't see this at the moment, but uh, when you got, went down to your cabin below, you know that the stairs to go back up are over here. So all right. You gotta go around the hallway, if you're gonna go up anyways. Uh, well, I still see a bunch of fishmen over here, right? Yeah, yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they seem to be so, paying you no attention, though, because, well, you don't necessarily know this, but your your disguise may be enough uh, that they don't seem to, to recognize you. I mean, there's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> They're too busy murdering people. <laughs> so, so I'm over here somewhere now? Uh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. So if you, all right, so you come up to the top then. This is, so as soon as you start going at the deck, basically, to the top floor, uh, you look out and see, you know, the, the sun. You're, this is the top deck where you are now. Um, you guys... Let me explain. Oh, I get it. I so, see how So what works. you guys are looking at for the top two in the four that you guys see, uh, Ben, Becky, Fox, you guys, you guys see this? Yeah. So the top two that you guys are looking at are actually the same deck. It's it's a little bit hard to explain. It's how, like an open area in the middle. Yeah, the, 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 the middle part that I have revealed on the, on the second one down, that is the deck itself. The part that you guys are standing on is what's called the quarter deck. Or sorry, you guys are on the forecastle. The back one where the, where the wheel is is called the quarter deck. Those two parts are basically all exterior. You've, you've seen this on pirate ships when you've seen, you know, like a pirate movie or anything like that. Uh, but basically the parts you guys are on are like raised flooring that is still exposed deck. And then those little la uh, stairs that are in front of you lead down to the main part of the deck, which is where Pogo is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. All right. Fox, you still with us? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to, now that, that you've come up top, we'll go ahead and get into normal combat order, uh, normal initiative and everything. But I got to load all these. And I don't know that this is going to make you guys too happy because it's a shit ton of them. Uh, we got but, 
Yeah, go ahead and give me initiative, everybody. Uh, uh, Justin, yours... You, it's, you technically went out of initiative. If you want to reroll, you can. You actually rolled really high anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep my high initiative. If that's an option. <laughs> oh no! Did it? Re oh no! They're there. Good. All right. Let me start revealing these guys. Really? <laughs> oh! With advantage. I'm, so I'm you, real glad they don't know who I am right now. <laughs> uh, so with this, uh, uh, with initiative or with uh, advantage on your initiative, you rolled two twos. <laughs> you dropped the two and still got a two. Damn it. Uh, Fox, that uh, save intelligence, was that supposed to be uh, size? Oh, no, that was supposed to, sorry. Uh, size is the 17. But I'm she's just... not here, remember? Right, never mind. I'm so <laughs> used to rolling her. Okay, okay, that one's mine. I grabbed the wrong thing. That's yeah, why. no problem. All right. So I see that there's a guy on top of me. Do I just pretend we're just cuddling up? <laughs> you are... Uh, we're just disguised right next to fish. each other. Yeah, just disguised. Oh, I hope they don't try to talk to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they actually don't seem to be paying you any mind. They're going down. There's others coming up. Uh, but you are directly in front of it. As soon as you come th uh, up the top All of the right. deck, uh, there is one that uh, is has four arms, is massive. Uh, he's probably 10 feet tall, you would estimate. Uh, you're probably not great at estimating, you know, the sizes of fishmen. Uh, but sure. <laughs> it's not a, a skill you, you've spent a lot of time practicing. Uh, but it is a massive four-armed one uh, that has uh, that has climbed over and is standing in front of you and seems to be directing traffic, essentially. Um, you see that there are multiple of the, the fishermen. You see occasionally one uh, will grab, like he'll, he'll spear uh, one of the halflings through and then pull it off the spear and throw it over a shoulder, and then he'll you know be going for a second one. And then once you see a fishman that has one on each shoulder and he just jumps over the side uh, back into the water. Fishman's got to eat, man. Uh, it seems that it seems to be that's what they're doing p potentially, anyways. But uh, Fox, it is Artemis' turn. Uh, you've seen just dozens. Well, you've seen at least a dozen of these appear. Uh, again, if you guys move off of the forecastle where you guys are, um, you'll be going down to the area where all the fish people are. You can actually still hit them from where you are and everything. You don't necessarily need to, to drop the token. You don't need to move down to the same floor if you have a ranged attack from top. That's where it gets a little bit confusing. I would just put it all on the same map, but the area directly below where you guys are that's still gray on the second floor down, uh, that one is cabins. That's where the captain's cabin is and the navigator and so on. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um. I'm going to move here. Okay. That's not actually 60, is it? Uh, oh, no, no, no. Are you trying? What are you trying to target? The massive, the massive sea one? devil. No, that's probably 15, 20. You'd probably need to move around Samson a bit just because he's still... Uh, he is, you know, he's similarly, of course, crawled out of his... Uh, yeah, that's fine right there. Uh, out of his tent. Uh, yeah, that's probably only 15, 20 feet maybe just because you're going down a little bit too. But he's tall enough that you can see his head easily. Um, in fact, actually, specifically for Fox, you know more than these guys do about these. There you go. Okay. I just, I just sent you a little text thing about what these guys are. Okay. Let me just read it for a second. Sure. Oh, I forgot to make the got it button for Justin, but we'll, we'll do that later. What's a got it button? Uh, basically, if there's... There, there will be, but basically when things come up that your character re re you know, notices something that the other guys don't or something that your character might know that the others don't and I send you information specifically it'll be inside um, for simplicity's sake so you understand what I'm saying I'm going to go ahead and send you this note Pogo does not know this information this is what Artemis knows or just learned uh, basically what she already knows about these that Fox didn't so you would see that you'd get that message that just popped up you see that oh neat so when I send those things Sometimes, especially if it's something that is like a social situation, uh, I don't always say it out loud, meaning the rest of the party may not even know that, I, that there's something special going on behind the scenes because this might be something that has internally happened to you or maybe a character is communicating with you telepathically, whatever. If I send you a message like that, there's a little button that you'll click that tells me that you got the button. So basically, you just tell me that you've seen what I typed to you, that's all. And Fox sent it, you know, as soon as I sent her that. So oh, should I be seeing a little button? Uh, you, I, we just didn't make it yet. <laughs> okay. 
Man, this might hurt me since I look like one of those fish guys right now. Uh, no well, one knows. Yeah, so so luckily you're you're still short and you're too short below the side of the deck there that Oh and Artemis I'm right next to the deck. You're, yeah. you're, you're right against the wall, like right below Artemis. So she didn't know well she doesn't know. <laughs> you know, she could she could have blasted your face right off just because you're a little one anyway, you know. She's like she could have seen you as she basically had a pick between the, the weakest target potentially, meaning you, or the, mm -hmm. the strongest target and she picked the stronger one because he's bigger. Okay, so that changes what I was gonna do. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yep. I thought it um, might, so I, I wanted to that's why I wanted to get it to you as early as possible, so and if it's something that Artemis could shout to the rest, you know, she doesn't have to, that's up to you. But if she were to, then the rest of the party would know that as well. Okay, yeah, I probably would. Um I would just say they're weak to electric and then use Thunder Wave on Thunder Wave is force, it's not electricity. That's still you still totally can, it's still a very viable tactic. Okay, so I don't have... I thought that was electricity. No, no Thunder Wave is something that blows them back. It's like, uh, you have Call Lightning, though. I just, I just looked yeah. at the spell list now. Okay, so I'm going to use Call Lightning. Okay. But my reservation for Call Lightning is if it hits the wrong thing, it could set fire to the boat, which the captain <laughs> would not be pleased uh, with. That's... that's yeah, Well, not as the captain. If the ship goes down, you guys are <laughs> off. So good. Yeah, luckily we've only been on this ship for like six hours, so we don't have to swim for like a day and a half. <laughs> well, oh, and I have a, oh, because we were taking a rest, I changed some of my spells, and I found my breathe water spell, so it lasts for up to 24 hours. Oh, nice. Okay. And so I prepared it. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, so at least cool. you'll survive. That's cool. <laughs> no, because I choose up to 10 people. Yeah, oh, okay. And it's a ritual, so I could just keep casting it on 10 people and 10 Perfect. people and 10 people. I was so you guys didn't technically finish the long rest yet. This is in the middle of the night. It was interrupted, but uh, it, it, it doesn't. Oh, it's still, no, it's I'm still, sorry. It's, I keep forgetting to change <laughs> my spells, and the one time I remember, I wouldn't have been able. <laughs> no, it's it's totally fine. It doesn't. You, I think you would have the night before, anyways, because you. Yeah. I mean, uh, narratively, you would have known. Of course, you're going out to sea, so you probably would have thought ahead of time to, to bring something you know of that sort, especially because you were uh, looking for sea reeds to help breathe and that kind of stuff too. So. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I'm going to use Call Lightning. Okay. Uh, let's see. Storm Cloud appears in the shape of the cylinder that is... Oh, this is the one that has the area. Okay. Um, and it just zaps out from Ooh. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, it, it was raining, so it might still be raining so, if there's fire issues. Well, okay. If Since it's raining and there's already a storm, I'm just I'm just taking over to that cloud. Or one of the... It's an existing storm cloud that's already there, yeah. But it's not, yeah. it's not raining, though. Where'd you guys get that from? Wasn't it raining the night before? No? Uh-uh. Oh, my bad. Yeah. No, it's actually been pretty clear. It was raining a week ago. Uh, not even quite that long ago. Um, ben, Becky... Well, actually, Fox, you get of course, uh, for the, the Battle of Sodden Field. It was raining really heavily then, but it's been pretty dry for the last four or five days. Got it. Uh, what size is that, Fox? It's supposed to be uh, 10 feet tall, 60 foot rate. Jesus. Yeah, 60 foot radius. Okay. I, I don't want to cover the whole map with this token, so... Um, yeah, just like... Because it zaps out from there anyways at 100 feet, right? So you, you like you would yes. basically put it off the side of the ship or whatever, and still be able to pretty much zap anything you choose. Um, so put it uh, where, wherever, yeah, the middle of it's fine, doesn't matter. Wherever it is, it can basically zap out at 100 feet from wherever you put it. Um, 100 feet directly above you. Hang on. It now. doesn't say how many targets I have, so I would just like zap, try and zap all. Of them. Um, it says a bolt of lightning flashes down from the cloud. Uh, uh, wait, to that point, each creature within five feet of that point makes a deck save or takes 3d10 lightning damage, which means it is going to hit the deck. Now, there is sea spray, so keep that in mind that even though it's not raining, the ship is hitting waves, and it's causing, you know, big big mist, essentially, like big waves of mist. Uh, so everything is wet. It's just not, like, soaking wet. And yeah. Lightning. So it should, be, it should be wet enough to where it's not going to actually caught, catch fire. Well, let's find out. <laughs> 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 But, uh, I mean, you, you would gather, I mean, being familiar, you've, you've sailed before, too, and being familiar with kind of the, the natural world enough that if direct lightning bolts hit, like, the, the top of the mast, for example, something like that, that's a little more dry, then it might catch. You've heard of situations like that. Hitting the deck or even the, the, the figurehead on the brow, or the bow or anything of that sort usually is okay. So you're, you're guessing you probably will be fine. And it would be a, yeah. a, you know, relatively good means, of course, of helping to get rid of these guys. So Yeah. Okay, so you're going to put the it thing... directly over the ship is where you're going to put it. Now, remember, the ship is moving. Yes. Okay, remember the ship is moving, though. The ship isn't going to stop here. You're going to sail past this storm cloud that you, hear, that you create. 
And I so, don't think I can... Can I... You can't move the cloud, but the cloud can zap for 100 so, feet, which means that you'll have probably two to three rounds of it being within range if you put it ahead of the ship a little bit, because you'd be sailing past it. So, the, so about three rounds of it being able to zap things. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess I'll put it over here. Okay. And what is the area? Because uh, five feet from the area that you targeted. So what? what is the... So, yeah, if you tap, if you hit the big guy, you don't know this, but Pogo's going to take a zapping too. <laughs> But also, like, yeah. But you don't know. It's that, something you don't know I don't. Know. Yeah, she yeah. has no yeah. idea. Yeah. So, uh, so you're gonna zap the big guy then, right? Yes. All right. Go ahead and target him and uh, target Pogo and Sea Devil Eight as well. There we go. And Pogo, your deck save you succeeded at. So uh, Still does half damage, though. Yeah, so you'll be taking... Uh, and actually, so, Justin, you can see these if you want to. Like, if somebody's casting a spell and you're not familiar with how it works or anything like that and you want to read how it works, you can actually bring it oh, up and hit the spells library. I did. Oh, did yeah, okay, cool. I'm, All right, I'm cool. reading it right now. Perfect. All right. Um, that's really helpful to kind of figure out mechanics and stuff like that. Especially, like, that's, that's a really complicated spell. There aren't very many that are that complex. Um, but... <sighs> Did oh, it roll? looks like most druid spells are complex. Yeah. Did, druid, so most of them are concentration, some are ritual, and some are ritual concentration, and it's just so confusing. <laughs> yeah. If I would have known this, I might have taken a different class, but I like the plant <laughs> aspect of this one, so I'm just like... Uh, it works out there. It's it's suitable for how you play your character anyway, so... All right. Sure. All right, so for those, the, uh, the massive one... Uh, it dodges out of the way just slightly, and it still hits the railing right behind him where his hand is, uh, and you see it kind of connect into his hand. Um, and the one that's that's uh, moving down the stairs was completely caught unaware and is blasted by it. Uh, and then the, the small one, the, the very diminutive, uh, that you can barely see just over the railing in front of you, was uh, was also kind of jumped out of the way just in time as this cloud appears and, and sends out this bolt of lightning. Go ahead and roll the damage on it. 3d10 that you'll take half of, Justin, so maximum of I'm damage. Yeah. <laughs> nice, okay, nice. so now I'm doing the damage. Yeah, leave it just like you have it. Have everybody targeted, and then just hit the damage, and then it'll it'll automatically half it for the people that are that succeeded, which is the uh, the massive one. Oh, um, when you shouted out what they are, or when you shouted out the you know the electricity thing, um, did you shout the name or anything of that sort? Anything do I help identify what these are? Uh, probably yeah. I'd probably say their actual name instead of the like. Okay. Sea Devil, I would have said they were Shirage, I think is how you... It's it's actually pronounced Sawagin, which, oh, is, which is super okay. awkward, but <laughs> that's how it's pronounced. Sawagin, okay. Uh, so... Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> I accidentally clicked it twice. I uh, right clicked. Sorry. Uh, well, actually, it was 5d6 that you rolled, so it looks like it was... Uh, uh, yeah, you right-clicked a couple of times uh, to add damage to it. Um... 30, we, we'll just leave the damage like it is. I don't. I don't care. Uh, just we'll subtract off uh, a nine and a four from Justin. So uh, for Pogo here, that would be down to. I accidentally clicked it while dragging it. Well, th it'd be twenty-three damage total that he uh, cut in half uh, for. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, for Justin, and I'll take it off of the the big guy. The the, the other one, it doesn't matter for the, the other one because he was knocked unconscious by it. And I have absolutely no fucking clue what just happened. Uh, you just. <laughs> Like, you My character's just sitting there like, what <laughs> the hell? You just saw a, a, a huge storm cloud appear above you, although, you know, distracted, of course, by all the things going on. You may not have even noticed that, except this this massive bolt of lightning that just crashed into the deck around you. Um, the You hear a head pop behind you, uh, Pogo, um, of, of one of these heads just, just completely explode from, like, putting a grape in the microwave, you know, that kind of explosive. Um, <laughs> of, of it just You're pretending popping. like I don't know what the sound of a popping head sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> you see Game of Thrones. Uh, but th so that one is toast. I'll go ahead and remove it. Normally, there's going to be bodies basically all over the floor. So just keep that in mind. I just don't want to leave uh, the combat tracker so full. Um, all right. Any bonus actions or anything for Artemis? Uh, not at the moment. All right. Mark off your spell slot and put up the concentration. And it is 13's turn. Who is? Uh, out, he's well below. Remember that that's, that cylinder that's there is actually up in the sky. It's not directly on the ship like that. So um, this one, 
your uh, G, you're breathing right in the mic. I think that's you. Yeah, yeah that's you. Fan. Oh, okay. Fan. okay. Um, all right, this one is seeing the other targets up the stairs is going to rush up. He's going to have to go around this guy, so if, uh, uh, he can make it up to, whoops, uh, just about to the to the deck here. Whoops, God damn it! sorry. Move your cloud. Uh, but Fox, I'm going to move it off just so that it's out of the way a little bit. Um, yeah. But it's still, you know, we'll, we'll just assume that it's actually there, of course, but uh, zoom out enough that I can move this guy. Up here, the closest target he can see is the little halfling at the edge, which he immediately comes charging up and try to spear. Uh, Sarah would be facing what direction, Becky? Uh, probably just over the side of the deck. That way. Okay. So that you see this one charging up the stairs and is immediately trying to, to uh, jab a spear into your side. Uh, for a 21, which hits. Um, and he's um, then after after jabbing into you with his spear, he kind of rakes upwards with a with his offhand with his claw, uh, which also hits uh, for three. Not much. That's it for his turn. Uh, the larger Sawagan that's in the back. You guys haven't uh, paid. It was just the second largest of this of this uh, attacking squad here. Uh, you haven't seen uh, move at all yet, of course. But she's just basically come up over the side here. She is going to. Um, she's going to move out to the middle of the deck here. To there, that's as far as she can get. And she's kind of facing up towards you guys at the, at the top there. Um, and she is going to... Oh, okay, I can tell they're females now. i got to really zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one that one is. That's the only female one you've seen. All right. Um, also, see, probably, because the only one that she can really see is the... Uh, is the halfling through the railing. Maybe a little bit of Artemis, but Artemis further back. So she is going to throw something towards uh, Sarah. Uh, Becky, give me a wisdom save. You have to beat a 12. No. Not with that. Uh, you feel um, uh, restricting bands kind of holding into your shoulders and squeeze, like as if Noark just grabbed your shoulders and pushed your, your shoulders together. Um, and it's kind of sm smushing your, your arms into your sides until they're, well, your arm into your sides, uh, until you are uh, uh, kind of frozen and locked there, you are paralyzed. All right. Uh, it was hold person that she got. Oh, jeez, that's not... Right. God, it sounds like a sex dungeon. It's <laughs> terrifying. Uh, the, so, the, 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 like I said, when I adjusted the sound, I hadn't adjusted that particular part of it yet, so that's uh, that's better now. Let me zoom this in a little bit so this can work better. There we go. All right, uh, that is it for her turn. Pogo, it's your turn. You are still oh, already as a fish man. You just got blasted by electricity, and you. And I have absolutely no idea what's happening. Yeah, you just know the ship's being attacked by, by sea devils. And I'm right next to this big crazy bastard. Um. All right. I'm actually. Is this just an open hold here in the middle? No. So that's actually a. Uh, you're talking about the big square in the middle. Yeah. That that's. Uh, you've seen it in probably in some movies, especially on slave ships. But uh, uh, any kind of a cargo ship usually have those, and it's basically a big hole in the floor with a steel grate over it. The steel grate can be. Li you can't do this, but it can be lifted out of the way usually with a crane, and then you can drop things into the with a crane. You drop okay. Into the but I can floor. I can step on it then. It's yeah. Fine you can walk over it. Yeah. Walk. Yeah. Yep. All right. And give you can me see through it too. You can second. see down to the deck below. Give me one second here. Okay. I am actually going to go right here. Okay. And let's go ahead and I'm going to face my brethren, these <laughs> other sea devils. Yep. And I'm going to scare the shit out of them by casting Thunder Wave. <laughs> right in front of me. Okay, so that's a 15-foot cube in front of you, which means both of these guys are in it. Uh, if it succeeds, you'll be able to potentially knock them off the ship. There's a railing there, so they're not just going to automatically fall over. They're going to get a save, essentially. Uh, to that's see what I'm going to try for. All right. All right, let's see here. So target the uh, both of them. Well, i got to make a square, don't I? Or no, does you it don't matter? have to. Oh, Basically, cool. that's, that's, for our, that's for your reference and mine, or you know the other players. But you can go ahead and do it just so that the other players see what you're doing but it's a 15-foot cube in front of you. 
So both of those guys and then basically the side of the ship would also be in that cube. So go ahead and do it just so that, so that everybody sees what you're doing. But especially if it's a spell you cast all the time, you won't need to do it all the time or anything. Oh. If you snap that one square to the right, it'll line up properly. There it there goes. Go. Yep. So that area, when you cast Thunder Wave, will be blasted forward and, and knocked away. And if they succeed, um, or they fail your save, they'll be knocked into the railing and take damage. And then if they fail the, the deck save to try to knock them over the ship, then they could fall back we, into the water. We might lose one of these tiny little ships. And by the way, this is going to turn off my... Uh my uh how to disguise yeah, yeah they won't yeah. i won't be disguised anymore but this is going to be really fun regardless so uh i ca do i just click the cast button yeah All right cast uh it actually does not break your disguise doesn't you that's uh, not like it's not like uh uh well it's because they can't see that i'm doing it no it's just that it's not it's not like invisibility it doesn't it doesn't break when you make an action the, these two, well, well, the other fish will know. Yeah, okay, What I, I guess what I should have said. You will still be disguised. It's just the other fish will see that you're not one of them. But Got it. the players don't notice that. They just see some infighting amongst the fishmen. If, if that. Sure. Uh, all right, so the uh, 14 succeeded. You got a 20. You got a natural 20, 20 plus 1. Uh, and the other one, these are con saves? That's interesting. Uh, the other one was, was blasted away by it. So go ahead and roll your damage on it. Okay. That's go. Oh wait, no, that's right. He just hit the wrong thing. There you go. So you blast both of these. Uh, it's supposed to knock them back ten feet, right? Do me a favor, roll a d20. Twenty-six here. <laughs> All right, with that roll, then um, his save will not. Yeah. No. All right. So the the uh, one well, that's further away from you, uh, as you kind of hold both hands out and send this this erupting force from him, is immediately th like he hits the back of it and it almost splits him into, uh, you know, of him of him bending backwards and being knocked off the ship and out into the waves. Uh, this one here uh, is not knocked away, but he's still you know is, is injured by it. So uh, that if your turn, any bonus actions, any more movement? Um. And you yes, are, you I'm are actually still leaving yourself disguised as a fish. Uh. Sh uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and uh, undisguise myself since I'm pretty sure the fish are going to be fucked up and attacking me anyway. So okay. we're going to go ahead and turn myself back into my little normal, beautiful self. All right. Uh, in the combat tracker, you will see um, a, a little axe head symbol that's to the, to the left of the info button mm -hmm. on, on your guy. So hit click that button. And then click where it says delete item. Itself. Well, yeah, to the right of it, the red. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You'll click that twice and it'll take off the effect from you. Got right. it. That if your turn. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to use a bonus action of healing word, uh, to, so I can get to some, heal up your electrified get some life back. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Uh, you just healed the fish man. Is what you just oh. Said. So, uh, it's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll apply the healing to you. There you go. Uh, well, you would untarget him and then target yourself, but it was seven anyway, so you've got five left. So you're good now. All right. I, I just did it for you. You're fine. Okay. Okay, that it then? Yep. All right. And... Hit the down arrow in the bottom corner, bottom left. <laughs> I'm probably going to forget that about 73 <laughs> times. Jeez, <laughs> uh, why is it still fucking loud? <laughs> I turned it down like halfway. All right, I just bumped it down a little bit more. Uh, uh, Sarah, you are still kind of frozen in place. You did see this this uh, somewhat feminine looking um, uh, Sawagan come up towards you um, and then kind of begin to, to, to chant this towards you. Uh, you are incapacitated, uh, so you, you can't move or speak. Uh, you are automatically failed dex and uh, strength and dex saving throws and attack rolls have advantage against you and any creature that hits you uh, uh, or any attack that, that hits you is a critical if they're within five feet. Meaning that the guy that's standing next to you is automatically going to crit if you don't break out of this. Yep. So, for your turn, all you can do is at the end of your turn, which means basically this is it, is you can re-roll that wisdom save and you have to beat a 12. And it's going to keep, it, it stays on for one minute unless you break it. Let's hope I roll high. <laughs> yeah. There's five inspiration. 
<laughs> there you go. All right, now that is the end of your turn anyways, because it's the end of your turn to, you know, when you, when you get to make that save. So you still kind of lose a turn, but you did break out of it, um, and you see some kind of viscous enmity from the uh, from the fish man, in, or the fish lady in front of you, uh, down on the deck below. Okay. Uh, all right, so Wagon 10, he's going down below anyway, so we'll move him off of here. He's going down to grab some more of the, the others down there. Uh, this guy is is running up the steps towards you as well, but his brethren is blocking him. Uh, he can just barely get in there. He'll slip by, uh, but let's see, 5, 10, 15. Uh, to get through the tent, this is as far as he can get. Uh, he does actually kind of stomp through the tent um, and then makes his way up to the deck there. Um, the massive one, uh, he's, okay, you guys wouldn't necessarily know that they're called a baron and a priestess, but it doesn't really matter. That's, uh, uh you know, stuff that, that, uh, Artebe could have told you after the battle, potentially. Uh, this one, though, is, uh, he grabs the ledge that's in front of him, um, to try to climb his way up to the upper deck there. Uh, let's see if he can make it. Um, almost certainly with that. Uh, except you rolled a two. So uh, he grabs the edge with with one hand and tries to, still holding his spear, uh, throw his, you know, because he's got four arms, but one of his other arms over the top of the railing to lift himself up, but it's still wet, and that's the arm that got zapped. Uh, he ends up kind of slipping his way back down, um, and he's go he moves over further to try it again from the middle. He's, he's got, uh, uh, well, it's multi-tag, it wouldn't be two actions. Uh, instead, he's going to go to the, to the stairs to try to just walk up normally after failing at that. Uh, Swagon 1 is going back to the cabins back here, so he's not doing anything that you guys need to worry about at the moment. Uh, the one in the water is swimming his way back to the side, so that'll be 15... Uh, there. He just swam his way right back up, but that's the end of his turn to, to get up there. Uh, this one is seeing the little uh, halfling that just uh, blasted some, some of his friends, or the, the fish man that turned into the halfling. There you go, Fox. Um, is going to try to... Uh, he doesn't have a spear on him. He's going to try to claw and then bite at Pogo. Uh, which hits. Okay, so when I called out they were weak to electricity, I would have probably called out the female could use... I didn't realize I would have known like she was female from that angle. That's all. Um, yeah, you wouldn't have. The, the tokens are not very different. These are just some shitty tokens. No, they aren't. I thought yeah. they were just all male, so I'm <laughs> like, oh. Okay. Um, yeah, so so you heard Artemy call out when she mentioned uh, when she yelled out that they are they swagging her uh, weak to electricity that she mentioned to try to target the female. Uh, so just keep that in mind too. Um, but the the slash and the bite both hit little Pogo. Oh. Uh, 19. He is going up top towards Orvin. And seven is back in the deck, so don't worry about him. It is Norok's turn. Finally. Yeah, okay. There's a bunch of these guys. Yeah. Um, Artime, you would also know one more thing that I'll yell to, that I'll tell you that you on your next turn can yell out to the uh, yeah that you can yell out to the party if you choose. Yeah. All right, gonna rage and uh, it wasn't. I'm assuming it wasn't too far in the night when we got attacked. So for or as long as we survive and nothing else attacks us, we'll have enough time for a long rest, right? Uh, you did not. Or, was it late in the night? Yeah, no, no, it, no but, it was only but after this, though. I mean, if we live through this and we don't get attacked again, if is there enough time this, to, this you, night you're for a long rest? This? That sounds if awfully optimistic. Yeah, you guys That's will still have. Yeah, you guys will still be able to finish your long rest. Okay. As long as you, <laughs> as long as the fight doesn't last for more than an hour, which of course it won't, then you can you can still <laughs> resume your rest basically. Yeah. Oh, All I right. see. That, now I understand why you're asking. <laughs> you don't want to deal with the. That would have been. That would have been something Norak would have actually thought about, though, too, because he knows he gets really tired after he does that. So. Yeah, after your frenzy, yeah. Norak yeah. has an ability, Justin, that uh, uh, when he uh, when he goes into a rage and go into kind of an enhanced version of his rage, that afterwards gives him exhaustion, which makes him suck at everything for the rest of the day until he gets a sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why he was asking, is because he doesn't want to suck for the rest of the day. That's right. Are right, you going to try to cleave this guy? Smash up number three. Uh, it hits. Sweet. Drop down to 11. Uh, Fox, did you see that last one, too? <laughs> uh, Sorry, I thought I'd hit. Uh, oh, you're fine. I just want to make sure that you saw it. Um, I actually double hit it, so okay. <laughs> you just double click and everything. Uh, you you woke up in an anger uh, and immediately uh, go into a rage and just swing Vulcan through its neck. 
uh, and the, the kind of fish head just goes flopping off and, and slaps wet onto the, onto the deck. Sweet. Extra attack. Yep. Let's see if I can hit 13. Sarah did just get speared and then clawed by this one here, too. Sarah had a rough start to this fight, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it hits. Sweet. Uh, he is not killed, uh, but you... We've got that's one a big more. hit. Oh, yeah, you do have one more attack nice. on. Uh, that is 13. Just do a standard this time. If it hits, I ain't getting the extra damage. Uh, he looks pretty badly wounded anyways. You actually cleaved off his left arm, uh, the one he had just used to claw. Uh, that hit, that attack hits as well. Uh, he, he's, he's in very bad shape already, so... Yeah, that's enough. There you go. Uh, and then you bring it back down uh, and just kind of slash him across the chest. Doesn't cut him in half, but it's a, a pretty wide swath um, of spilling out fish blood as he collapses backwards in front of the stairs. That okay, and I... Yeah, oh, I didn't mean to move that tent, sorry. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just drop the tents oh, off. I just, I just wanted to show you guys where they where you guys were. Okay. So well, that one guy oh, smashed through that one anyway, so... Yeah. So I'm just it's gonna broken, stop right in the doorway. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's another coming up the stairs directly in front of you. Oh, no. Never mind. He got it the way. Never mind. Yeah, the, uh, the big guy is right in front of you, so you just went directly okay. in front of the... Uh, you know what? For... Well, no, I can't be you guys down there. Yeah, so basically, I, like I said, I would just reveal the other deck, but if I do that, then that's where the cabins are, so it would look like you're inside of rooms that you're not inside of and that kind of stuff, so... Um, this one, though, is directly in front of Pogo, is going to try to spear him as well. The one that I fucking launched against the side of the boat? No, the other one. The one that, that uh, well, he misses anyways. Uh, and he's now going to try to claw you. These guys have multi-attack. Uh, which does hit. Claw doesn't do very much damage, but... Uh, it slashes into your resplendent uh, bardic uh, gear. Your opulent clothing. Uh, it is Samson's turn. He is going to hop off the edge of the... He just, just grabs the edge of this. He does not have his armor on, so his AC is really low. Um, but he's going to just just grab the ledge uh, and kind of drawing his greatsword off of his back, jumps over the, the ledge here down to uh, the deck below. Um, it's about 10 feet down, so I'm, I'm going to have him do a deck save to see if he stumbles. No, he's fine. Uh, hops down to the deck below. What's that? Oh, I was just saying I figured he was going to fall over. Some bad luck. He usually rolls really shitty, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so. which sucks because he's, like, he's actually... Got, he's got good stats. Like he, he should do well. Just usually my NPCs are awful. Um, but he goes charging at the big one, not noticing the the priestess, the female that's beside him, uh, and tries to cut a, a, a wide swath with his greatsword at the at the Baron, the larger one. Uh, and he rolls a natural one because of course he does. <laughs> oh no! Uh, his, his fumble, thankfully, you know, was I, not on the I table. Use, can I use bountiful luck on him, <laughs> even though I don't really know him, but I, I know, you know that what? he rolled a one. Well, okay, so out of the corner of your eye, you see this... this uh, armor. See him fail terribly. Yeah, this, 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 no. the, the, the knight that had been armored when you came onto the deck before uh, hops over, not in his armor, still in his night clothes, basically, hops over with his greatsword ready to... You know, obviously he's an ally, uh, so you can go ahead and use your bountiful luck to uh, go ahead and mark it off. All right, so... Uh, oh, never mind. You don't or, I'm sorry, this. bardic inspiration. Oh, no, well, that's a... That's a Bountiful luck is a reaction. It is. It's your reaction, but it's actually you don't. It doesn't take anything. You can do it as often as you want, as long as it's yeah. a natural one within thirty feet of you. And Five, it is, 10, 15, so. 20, 25. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, so, so just you click can, it. Uh, well, just click the cast button for it. There you go. Um, and did that? Did you? Did it drop an effect somewhere? Oh, you put it on yourself. Okay, cool. Oh, duh. It, you're fine. It doesn't hurt anything. It's it, like it's fine, like it is. Um, uh, but Samson is uh, uh, allowed to essentially re-swing. Uh, basically, narratively, it's uh, like a retcon. We just basically back it out so that attack didn't happen. Uh, so he's going to swing again and rolls a natural 7, which thankfully <laughs> does still hit with his modifier, just barely. <laughs> God, these guys, like, my fucking NPCs are always awful, but it's a good hit anyways. Uh, cleaves into... Oh, jam. Uh, cuts off the lower swinging arm of this 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 uh, this larger you know this this ten foot tall fish man that is trying to climb up clamber up these steps towards Norok. Uh, uh, Samson just cleaves off its lower arm uh, that is not holding a weapon or anything, um, but just cleaves it off and it just falls flat to the to the deck with a with a slap. Um, 
And will Sacred Flame as well. No. Anybody hurt nearby? Yeah, actually, uh, he looks over his shoulder. When he was running this way, he saw that you were wounded, uh, uh, Pogo. Um, seeing, you know, you bloody and, and being surrounded. Uh, sure. So he throws a, a, a Cure Wounds your direction. Or a Healing Word, rather, your, your direction. Um, for three. Didn't heal for much, but at least something. Eh, appreciate it. Um, <laughs> it was a, helping, a, a trade for help. Uh, below decks, you guys... Uh, oh, actually, nobody's down there, so you guys wouldn't hear this. Uh, but they're uh, looking... You guys don't necessarily see this part, but the ship uh, lists hard to port, which is uh, to the to the north, basically, on the map here. Um, it just, like, swings hard uh, to that direction. Uh, looking up, you guys see at the wheel uh, above. Orvin is not at the wheel. There's no good guys at the wheel. Uh, one of the sea devils has grabbed the wheel and swung it hard to the left. Um, which caused the ship to kind of kind of veer off really hard to, to one side. Uh, everybody give me deck saves. You need to beat a 10. All right. Oh. Damn, Justin was on that fast. Did you, did you just assume it was going to be a deck save? No, I clicked it when you said, like, deck save. Uh, well, you got it fast. Uh, uh, ben, you have advantage... Danger sense. From danger I could, I could see that coming, right? Like, yeah. I was, well, you, okay. you would feel the ship moving under your feet, so okay. enough time. Um, but you have advantage from that, and then also that ring of evasion, but you didn't fail. I think the ring of evasion just lets you, if you failed, you can choose to succeed if you spend a charge or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, but you, you succeeded. In fact, everybody did. You only needed to beat a 10. So uh, uh, Pogo's 10 is exactly what you needed, any less you would have failed. Uh, but the deck kind of sways underneath you. Wait, hang on, hang on. It was 10, right? Yeah, it's 10. Okay, good. I was thinking it was 12 for a second. Uh, but you feel the ship, like, spinning hard to the left, um, kind of rocking out underneath you. Um, I'm going to just roll these in bulk, so give me one second. Uh, whoops, not how I meant to do that. Uh, that will do... Alright. Uh, two of them fall prone as well. Two of the, the swagon that are, in fact, it's the two, uh, 14 and 4. No, sorry, 14 and 26. Um, that are by, uh, uh, Pogo get knocked prone by the, by the ship swinging. Let me grab them. Uh, it is Artemis' turn. Yeah, I'm just gonna, um, uh, I guess reuse the... Okay. Your lightning is back to about here. Still enough room to zap, you know, whatever five-foot area you choose to. I'm gonna zap the ones closest to us, like, coming up. The large one and the priestess? Nope. Okay, so if you zap it, let's say you're hitting right here, then. If you hit right there, where did I just put that red circle? If you hit there, it won't hit Samson. Okay, perfect. Okay, so target the Baron and the Priestess. I'll remove the circle. Uh, the Baron got a natural... T no, sorry, he got a 15 plus 5 is 20, so he succeeded. And the Priestess got a 10, so she failed. There we go. Uh, we need to... Hang on, i got to adjust that because of the... Resist... Or the... Um, uh, vulnerability to lightning... Go. Try it. Is that if you're any bonus actions or movement or anything? I'm going to move back a bit. Okay. Back away from the railing. That railing that you guys are standing in front of, that's not a wall, of course. That is uh, like a barrister, like a or banister, rather, the side of a... Oh, yeah, I know. I'm just moving away in case they climb up so I could just, like, attack them from afar and not get... Okay. All right. That if your turn, then? Yep. All right. Then it is the priestess's turn. Uh, she, seeing the uh, knight in front of her that is swinging at the at the largest of these, uh, she is going to. Oh, sorry. I just call out that if we kill enough, they'll leave. Super helpful. <laughs> <laughs> the let's see. He doesn't have a lot that's good here. She's going to try to hold person on, uh, which will take her action. He was against Samson. 
uh, he rolled a natural 20, so he succeeded, and that's it for her turn. Nice. She is uh, she is going to try to back up, like behind the, uh, uh, the the largest one, the Baron. Pogo's turn. You have a target. All uh, right. You have yourself Thank you. <clears throat> I'm target. Target. Okay, Pogo's turn. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think. Uh, you see, obviously, the the, the uh, one to your left and the one off to the side of him. When the ship veered off to the side, both of them got knocked out off of their feet. Uh, so they're both. Uh, if you if you back up like that, fourteen is actually. Oh, they'll get the. Uh, yeah, fourteen will get an get opportunity the... attack. Yeah. Who is still on his feet? Okay. You did hear another lightning bolt uh, crash into the ones behind you as well. Sure. Check. All right. I'm actually going to probably move my whole screen. Oh, he'd still get a reaction, huh? Uh, if you, yeah, if you move out of their radius, basically, if you move anywhere other than to the northwest, then you're gonna get an opportunity attack. Now, four is on the ground, so if you move like to here, if you move right there, for example, then four will try to swing at you uh, or try to claw at you from the ground, but he'll have disadvantage because he's laying flat. He's not prone. You know, I'm still. Going to move back, okay. and I'm actually going to take that. Uh, the opportunity that, attack. Uh, opportunity. Yeah. Do I take the opportunity attack now or after my action? As soon as you, as soon as you start to move. So basically now. Okay. Uh, so he's going to try to jab at you with a spear as soon as you're trying to back away, unless you're spending your action to disengage. Uh, remind me what that means again. If you choose to spend your action to disengage, you you won't have another action for this turn, but you will not get an opportunity attack. Nope. We're going to go ahead and accept the opportunity attack. Okay. Well, he swung it, or he tried to jab at you with his spear. He got an eight, so he did not hit you. So you are successfully right. backed away from him. Now, if again, if you move away from four, now they mm-hmm. have to spend their reaction. So if you get out of the range of four, then he will also get an opportunity attack against you. His will be at disadvantage because he's prone, but let's just keep that in mind. So where you're at right now, you're, you're, you, know, you safely made it to where you are now. So I'm actually going to do another Thunder Wave okay. on all three, three of these <laughs> bastards right here. And do uh, I rolled a cast. Oh. Well, so you casted Thunder Wave and Healing Word already, right? Because you Healing Word did uh, But these are level one, so I should have a few more. You ha- Yeah, you just you casted two so far total. You casted Thunder Wave once and Healing Word once. So there you go. You, you have two spell slots used, and then if you're casting Thunder Wave again now, that'll be three used. Yep. All right. I think I'm going to do it. Okay. Because I get to watch three guys possibly roll. <laughs> get knocked roll, off the side. The way. Yeah. Well, one or of them at got least knocked get... off and then climbed right back up again, but at least that'll be out of the water and the ship is moving. But it still does damage side. to him, right? Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I hit cast. Yep. All right. Uh, the 16 succeeded and... Uh... Wait, hang on. No, sorry. Fourteen succeeded. Twenty-six and four failed. Oh shit! All right. So the two that were that were laying prone are pushed away from it. And then I roll the attack. Go ahead and roll the damage. And it's how far oh, back does it knock? Fifteen. Uh, damage. Wait. Uh, push ten feet away. That's from what me. I want. Okay. That's a little bit too quiet. Let's that back up a little bit. All right. Uh, so that did. Yeah, you did it right. Um, okay. But the two that were knocked prone, the, the 14 kind of, kind of, the one that's directly in front of you that tried to stab at you, 
uh, kind of kind of steals himself seeing this blast happening again, the same one that, that you tried to hit him with earlier. Uh, 26 goes uh, blasting through the side because he's already knocked prone, so he can't really do much to try to save himself. Uh, is knocked to here, 10 feet away. This one is knocked 10 feet back to here and hits the railing, uh, still laying down. But one of them, you hear another splash as the one you already knocked out before goes talking into the water again after he swam he, his way back up. It's the same one. And he's, not, back up again. And he's not dead yet? <laughs> uh, I, you didn't kill... Wait, hang on. No, you did the damage. Uh, 14 right. was hit with half. Yeah, the damage was applied. This, these these ones are a little bit healthier. There's there's a pretty good right. range for these guys as far as some of them have super low health, so I'll, I'll just give you some numbers. Uh, so one of them has 29, one of them has 23, right. uh, 25, 22, 19, and there's one that has 16. So, I mean, there's okay. a pretty good, pretty good range as far as their HPs. Uh, and now I can still, since I only moved five feet, I can move again, right? Well, so now you knocked away four. Yeah, you can, you can definitely move again. You knocked away four, so there's no risk of opportunity attack for you now. So you can use the rest of your 20 feet if you want to. All the way over here. Okay. And let's see. Um... Uh, you could inspire somebody for your bonus action. Um, I think I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to use. Oh, that's not what I want. I'm going to use Bartic Inspiration. Okay. But I'm pretty sure the only people I can see are. Uh, through, through the railing, you can see. Uh, Art, well, you can actually see Sarah. And I can see Norok. Yeah, you can see Norok at the top of the stairs and Sarah through the railing, and then Samson is close by you. Artemis is a little uh, bit too far back for you to be able to see her, especially because you're short. Yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and use this on... Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and use this on uh, Samson, since I don't really know who these people are, and I'm just going to cast it on him. Okay. So target him. Yep, and then untarget the other Sawagin. Oh, yeah. There you go. And then cast... Hit the effect. And then mark off your use of Bardic Inspiration. And then uh, also for your Thunder Wave, you got to mark off. Yep, other uh, level one. Yeah, your other level one spell slot. And don't forget, you guys still have your Inspirations too, so keep that in mind. Because uh, you so, will finish your long rest, so if you don't use them, they're going to disappear as soon as, we take the, as soon as you finish your long rest. Does he just kind of know that he has this now, or can I tell him? Uh, <laughs> so, so narratively, how it works is just it. basically you would you would tell him a funny joke or you know sing a song or whatever, and he would feel inspired by that, and that's when he you know could be from that inspiration would apply it to his next attack or whatever. Right. Okay. That if your turn. Uh, let's see. All right. This is what I tell him, by the way. What do you call a mountaintop guarded by rogues? A sneak peek. And that's how I give him his uh, Did you just? Did you literally look up a bunch of shitty jokes to use for when you came out? It's maybe. <laughs> like an NBC name table. He's just ready to rock it anytime. I like it. Oh, that's good. All right, and now I'll go ahead and end my turn. All right, this is Sarah's turn. So hopefully she can actually get to do something for this whole fight so far. Okay. Is there any way to get Dragon's Breath in between Morak and Samson so I don't hit them, but I hit the guy in the priestess? You would need to jump over the railing. Shit. You can see that it's probably, you estimate, 8 to 10 feet down. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your broom. You have your broom. Yeah, you have your broom. Okay. <clears throat> so, I mean, that would be 60 feet of movement. You can just fly above them and Dragon's Breath them if you wanted to. That works. I will do that then. Okay. Then in that case, let's. Uh, uh, I'm going to move you down to that deck real quick, just so that it's easier to show where you are, and we'll just we'll just know, of course, that you're actually flying above. Uh, you know, we'll just put you like right here that you're flying above Samson, so that you can breathe at, at an angle to hit them without hitting Samson or Norok. <coughs> Alrighty then. So the ship. I would say that it's there's a little bit of calculation probably needed. So go ahead and give me. Give me. A flat intelligence check, I think, um, because the ship is moving, and now so are you, and you're no longer attached to the ship. So it's like a fly flying inside of a car. You know what I mean? Uh, if, you know the, the the I guess that's a little bit different because the atmosphere is there, but um, I, it's going to be a low DC, just be to five. Yeah, you're fine. 
so that you're not moving along and kind of strafing into Norok and Samson as well, or, <laughs> or crashing into the into the mast. Uh, all right, uh, you're fine. So go ahead and uh, uh, apply the cast to them. Uh, natural twenty on the priestess, so she succeeded. Uh, the Baron, the Baron got a two plus oh. five for a seven, so he failed. Great. Uh, what flavor were you using here? Lightning. Oh, it's lightning. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, with that said, actually, the priestess, because she succeeded, took half, but because of the vulnerability, uh, hang on, that would be oh. Uh, she, so you breathe out this kind of blast of, of uh, this cone of electricity in front of you that zaps over both of them. The Baron is is kind of convulsing and shaking in place. Um, the Priestess is is kind of just just shaking this off. But as soon as she kind of looks up at you with with this this anger, you see that one eye is burst inside of her head. Uh, she did, she looks very uh, close to death. The Baron's badly wounded as well, but but he doesn't look nearly so bad. That was. How many feet of movement? Uh, because you had to come up over the railing a little bit, probably 15 out of, I think, 60 for your broom, isn't it? Yeah. Since I'm on the broom, would I get opportunity attacks? No, you're outside of his range. All right. Normally, yes. Like, if you flew right up next to him, yes. But you're up a bit because you came off of the, the, the uh, foredeck. All right, I'm going to go right there. All right. Uh, still up. How how high above the deck, I guess, for flying over there? You're just keeping the same height you were? Yeah. Okay. All right. You're high enough that if something comes near you, they can't reach you, basically. All right. The Baron is going to take a good smack at Norok uh, with his multi-attack. First time he actually gets to fucking do something. If it hits, I'll use my tribal endurance. You fucker. You, seriously, you're going to ruin... <laughs> my, my NPC yep. gets to do something, and you're like, no, I think I'll just, just stop that. Chop down, give him 20 on it. Uh, we'll kill him. Why does he... Oh, because you are you frenzy? Oh, yeah, yeah, because you frenzy. Yeah, you're uh, um, reckless. Reckless. Yeah. yeah. Uh, his first one misses. He swings again with his offhand, uh, which hits. For 20 damage, which you take half of because of your rage. Mm-hmm. And then his third attack... Uh, are you going to swing back? Yeah. All right, go ahead. He can go first, though. Okay, all right. Hold on, let me draw this. Hang on. Well, I'm getting ready. All right, and his last hit is a 19, which also hits. Um, okay. All right, so this one's a little bit heavier. Um, where he claws into you, you feel uh, your skin begin to burn a little bit. Uh, give me a con save. Okay. There we go. Natural 20. All right, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> never get to do anything. He still rolled well, at least, but you take half damage from it. So, oh come on, man! <laughs> no wait, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my hold on. I'm gonna use my god damn it! I'm gonna use my bountiful <laughs> luck since I've already had a turn since the last time I've done it. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, and you're within, within range. Anymore. You're within thirty feet. So he yeah. basically uh, halflings and Sarah has this the, the first part of this. Halflings have a, a, an ability called lucky, and that ability lets them oh, roll wait. once for themselves. But. Uh, 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 Justin specifically chose a sub race that lets him have b- what's called bountiful luck, which lets him use it on anybody else within 30 feet of him as his reaction uh, every turn. He can do it as often as he wants. Well, I, as long as I can't do it unless I've already had a turn between. So, like, I it's, can't. Uh, it's your I reaction. Gotta... Yeah, it's your reaction. And you get one reaction every turn. So. Yep. Yeah, All right. right. So uh, I can't target him because of the way the map is. You so don't need to we... in this case. Like <laughs> normally, if it was something that that turn wasn't coming back around for a minute, then we would have you put the effect on just as a reminder. But since we know, we'll just have no re roll sure. it. Okay. So uh, for before you re-roll that though, uh, basically I just look up to you and I say, uh, um, a warlock threw a teacup at me. It was a tiefling. Uh. That one makes you think <laughs> a little bit. Be so stupid. A tiefling! A tiefling! <laughs> <laughs> Tieflings are that stupid half demon race, guys. Yeah. So we don't use them in this setting, so they don't. You know, they may not recognize what it is. What I actually meant to say is, why do paladins prefer chainmail? Because it's holy armor. Now get him, big guy! <laughs> God damn it! Oh, why did I invite you? Why did I fucking invite you? <laughs> oh, that hits you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, he looks pretty bad. If you rolled high enough, you might be able to take him out. Nope, no. Oh, yet. come on. Yeah. No, well, the, a regular attack wouldn't do it. You would need, like, your yeah. master all that kind of shit, so. Alright, uh, that was it for his turn, was all his swings at you. Um, he, well, he, he did spend all of them, so he can't really do much to, to deal with, uh, Samson at the moment. Um, 
This one back here, uh, you guys don't see this happening really. Uh, maybe Sarah, you probably do actually because you're close enough. Uh, down below you, you see one of them coming out of the captain's cabin area, uh, and there's a body thrown over each shoulder, and he rushes towards the edge of the ship and dives off. He just dives overboard, you know, holding bodies under each. Um, uh, he's going to try to climb. Yeah, I think he's going to come back up. He's, he's still healthy enough that he's going to make his way back up again, but that's as far as he can get, and he doesn't have any ranged attacks. So you see the same one that you've now knocked off twice come climb back up again over in front of you, uh, Pogo. Uh, climbs back up the edge and kind of uh, dripping water stands over the edge again, just staring at you angrily. Uh, four, he... Five, ten... Uh, he'll see that he can't get up to Sarah, so five, ten... 15, 22, he can make it to you. Uh, and is going to just rush at you like Even like from a prone? Car. Oh, shit, no, sorry. No, 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 I forgot he was prone. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, because that means half of his movement, so actually he could not make it that far. He has, he stands up, and 5, 10, 50, he can make it to here. Uh, I actually forgot he was prone, so good reminder. So he did not make it that far. Ah. Did you guys just, like, neutering my NPCs? <laughs> um, uh, this one, he was... Well, oh, he's out there dealing with Orban, and I didn't put Orban in the combat tracker. I'm going to remove him off... Um, just to, to just to simplify this a little bit. Uh, similarly with him, he's still. Uh, hang on. Uh, okay. Uh, you don't see this guy. He's basically just he's off in the cabins here. Uh, you wouldn't see him anyways for the angle you're at. Okay, Fox. No, Fox. Okay. okay. I suppose I should have a got it for you guys as well, huh? We we have one. No, I, I mean, Buttons. I should have one for, like, when you guys send me a message, like Fox sent me a message. Uh, oh. So I just, I, I told her I got it, but I should have one for you guys as well. So there you go. Yeah. All right, let's see if I can hit Big Dude here. Uh, he, yeah, like I said, he looks really rough. One of his arms is, is cleaved off. His lower left arm was cleaved off by, uh, by Samson and is laying on the deck. Um, and you've hacked away a good chunk out of him. He's basically got good, uh, just massive sw uh, uh, cuts uh, into the kind of fishy muscle. Just cleaved through the scales and everything. And if this hits, I'll use my uh, extra damage dice on it. Okay. I don't even know if I need to, but just for fun, though. Uh, that hits. Sweet. This guy, especially yeah, as big as he is, he's not that hard to hit. His AC is, isn't very high. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you can roll too little. So go ahead. Yep. There we go. Uh, not only unconscious, but actually oh. uh, instant death uh, from too much damage. Um, you cleave through his neck uh, until the, there's. It doesn't separate, but you just cut kind of a wide open cut uh, through the shoulder and the neck, and then yank Vulcan back out. Um, and he kind of slips off, but because his shoulder is so heavy, uh, he like is almost split in two. Uh, like it's like uh, Cube, I think. Did you guys see the horror movie Cube? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, a, like a you know pieces basically falling kind of uh, both parts of uh, or uh, Underworld, where where she kind of cuts McDudson in half, kind of like yeah. that. Uh, and he kind of falls backwards, uh, to, uh, almost onto the priestess actually of him uh, being in the way. But he is almost blocking that stairway. You'll pretty much have to step over him to, to get down to the deck. Um, but he is very much dead. Uh, any bonus actions? Any further movement? Um. You I still have. You still have two attacks. Yeah. So. I was say. Uh, you. I think you dropped yourself inside of there. Uh, well, you still have your. Two yeah, attacks. I was. Yeah, I was just. I had to move myself between the two ships so that I got the, the map kind of big, so I had to do it in stages. So. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I've moved you yeah. over. That's a. You could actually still make it further than that if you didn't go into her uh, opportunity range, but you still have two attacks. So. Yeah, that would be a good position. So. Okay. All right. That hits. Sweet. Uh, also, Toast, she only had one hit point left, so... <laughs> the two of them are dead. Uh, you just go cleaving through the bosses. You still this, have is just the Norok. this is the Norok show. Yeah. Today. He's a, he's a, a train wreck for, <laughs> for running through bad guys. I think he's just a train. <laughs> Maybe that's what I meant. Maybe not a train wreck, but... <laughs> 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 yeah. Whoops. All right. Um, you can't yeah, because I think I have 40. I uh, think I have 40, 40 movement, movement yeah. so I can probably still get to him, huh? Uh, well, number no, because remember, the Baron was... Uh, uh, rough uh, terrain. Rough terrain, yeah. Uh, um, okay. Hostile terrain. 
So that would have been 20 feet to get through the through the barrens. So you have 20 feet left, which actually right, I'll just no. Well, 14 is 15 feet away. You can still make it. Oh, okay. Or four, not 14. Sorry, four is like if you move to here, that's as far as you can make it. Hmm? You're gonna hit him. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Little bastard. Uh, that hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, he's also toast. Okay. Even through three bad guys in the same turn. Alright. Oh, uh, sorry. I had the wrong. Okay, I don't think it mattered. I had the button to get on accident. That's, that's fine. Okay. Uh, well, no, it's, it's 14. It's his turn. Um, he is going to finally try to rush at, uh, at Pogo to spear him. He's not prone, but uh, a 19 for a 22 total to hit. Uh, for three damage. Not much. <laughs> Uh, Samson now has his inspiration. Uh, let's see. Is, he comes running around uh, beside you, trying to kind of interpose himself between you and the uh, uh, fishman here to, to try to help. Appreciate it. Uh, which hits. He still has the inspiration, but he didn't need it yet, so. Uh, which did not. Damn, he rolled, really, he rolled three ones and a two. Jeez. <laughs> Like my NPCs are always uh, awful. It's 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 like they they always 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 roll really really bad. Um, that's it for his turn. Uh, as the, the now we're finally back around to the beginning again. Um, the ship remember it sounds like it's been a while, but it's only been six seconds. The ship had just veered off to the left when everybody had to make that deck save. Remember off to port side. Sure. Um, and yeah. now the uh, there's a cacophonous uh, crash as the ship dips low into the valley of this 15 foot wave. Uh, and then crashes bow first, square into the broadside of this wave, uh, rocking the deck out from under you and setting this massive cascade of water overhead. Everybody give me a deck save. You have to be 14s. Oh. Not with that. Not gonna happen. Ooh, lucky. Uh, no, well, Artemis just barely made it too. Reload? Mid. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to. It's not gonna let me do anything. What happened? Keeps getting an error message on fantasy grounds. Little window popping up with the red letters. Okay, it's probably image size, but that wouldn't be her side. So, uh, Becky, like, if you don't care, I'll go ahead and roll it for you on my side. If you want to just reload fantasy grounds. Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, uh, deck save for an 18. You succeeded, so you're fine. Uh, everybody except for Pogo. <laughs> oh! <laughs> See, uh, sees this massive wave uh, crash. It's not even that the, the, the wave is that big. It's that the ship kind of dips down underneath this because of the fish man that was grabbing the wheel and spun it, uh, kind of forcing you into the into the trough in front of a wave. Uh, so the ship kind of dips down underneath this and this massive wave crashes over it, uh, pushing everybody, uh, well, if you failed your save, which of course just means mm. Pogo, uh, off of the, uh, over the waves and then, and then out over the side. So Pogo, you are now uh, out into the water, uh, just washed out of the way. Now, no opportunity attacks because the fishmen also have to deal with this, uh, but you are knocked off of the side of the ship uh, and over to here. Uh, Sam I got to roll one for Samson still, and then I'll roll the fish guys. Uh, Samson also failed. So uh, the you and the knight both get ah! overboard, which narratively makes sense, of course, because he was standing right next to you, so he gets pushed over with you. Um, and then the fish, let's see here. A natural 20. Uh, he failed. And the ones you can't see. Okay. Uh... Be this guy. Uh, one of the fishmen comes comes kind of knocked over with this uh, uh, wave into the water as well, um, and you see this one like turning as soon as he crashes into the waves. Of course, it's natural for him. You're basically barely underwater. Uh, you see him starting to turn as if he's going to maybe swim away. Uh, but that is it. It is Fox's turn. Uh, Becky, what happened there? By the way, I think that's probably image size, um, which is what will be. Um, Okay, I see you reconnecting now too. Um, what that's what's changing this this is a 32-bit application and it can only handle a certain amount of memory. Um, and when the new version comes out in December, we'll try the beta before then. But when the new version comes out, it'll be a 64-bit version. So basically, we won't have memory issues anymore. So stuff like this will be a lot better. All right, Fox. Uh, you, there's still one turn of your lightning being uh, close enough to zap the deck here. 
Um, there's there's two that you guys can't see on the map right now that are on the forecastle in the back. Or, sorry, the quarter deck. The back. I'm just going to hit these two again. Okay. Because if they're ambushers and they're going to leave kill enough of them, killing their, like, the priestess and oh, those the big two are, boss. Those two are dead already. Uh, oh, Norak, oh, Norak yeah. cleaved through the Baron and the priestess both. Uh, so both of them are dead. Okay, so which one's still alive? Uh, there's 26, which is over here. I'm going to move your circle. Uh, he's still alive. This one just knocked into the water, but if you, if you zap that water, you're going to screw pretty much all the fish nearby. <laughs> <laughs> and Pogo and Samson. Uh, and then there's three more back. Or, well, this guy and then one more. Uh, sorry, this guy and two more that are on the uh, over by the wheel. Okay, I'm going to get the one by the wheel. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, just target number seven for me. Okay. And go ahead and cast it at him. And that he failed. Go ahead and roll the damage. Jeez. That must be one of the ones with the higher HPs. Uh, yeah, he actually has pretty high HP. Uh, so um, the the lightning crashes down and actually hit, impacts almost next to the wheel, uh, where the wave has just washed over that, causing the deck to be just, just awash with this uh, salt water, and it's very slippery, of course, uh, but conductive, uh, which managed to zap both of them. You actually see from your side, because you're up higher still, you can see directly back there and see Orvin, the dwarf that you guys know, uh, that is still trying to fight off these uh, fishmen, is, is similarly zapped a little bit. Um, he wasn't, you know, at the range. He wasn't close to. It, so he wasn't, wasn't impacted. Just the kind of uh, environmental electricity that traveled through the, the uh, water at his feet. So, any bonus actions? Uh, no, but I will drop my call lightning. Okay, it would be ineffective the next turn anyway. So, All yeah, right. but I'll drop concentration on it anyway. Okay, and no bonus actions. That's it for your turn. No, that's it. All right. Uh, the priestess is down. It is Pogo's turn. All right. Let's see here. You are... Oh, shit. Um, sorry. Something I... Now that you're in the water, uh, yep. you're kind of thrashing about, kind of make you, trying to, to swim your way back up to the surface. You weren't just... You, you were knocked into it and then, you know, probably five feet below the water. So as you're pulling yourself up towards the surface there, uh, back towards the ship, you see a flash of white in the, and gray in the water that kind of catches your eye. Um, there's something very rapidly swimming towards you in the water. Great. <laughs> um. Well. Uh, and Samson has to I think, you, of course. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to have to... How... How fast can I move in the water? Uh, half, if you don't have any swimming things, it's half of your movement. Okay. So, so basically, this feet. would be ten, and yeah, then I'd have to, to climb. To the side, and then you got to climb, which is also half your movement. So, yeah, I've got to swim ten to the ship, and then uh, climbing. How how tall can I? How high can I climb? How tall is this deck well, to get to the top? Deck? Twenty-five feet, and half of that it rounded up, so you get fifteen feet of movement. It took you, uh, for total movement, so it took you essentially five after we half everything to get there. You can make it up basically half the way up the side of the ship. Can I climb in one of the other de uh, one of the other levels? Uh, there aren't portholes along that side. Okay. Yeah. This, is, this, this kind of ship is called a galliot. That's a good idea, uh, just this kind of ship wouldn't have, wouldn't have windows, essentially. On All side. right. Can I climb up half the ship and just hold on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. You're basically up on the side. As the ship is still crashing into waves, your feet are getting wet, <laughs> as, you know, because the water's coming up enough to hit your feet and then come back down again. Uh, sure. As it's um, waves. What I'd like to do is I'd like to climb up halfway up the ship, and then I'm going to uh, use cutting words. <laughs> okay. To yell at uh, the the one that I can still see in the water, the okay. the one that's turned 16. towards Samson. Yeah. Uh, well, hang on, there's a shark in the water near Samson as well. Oh, I didn't even see you put him on there. Yeah, that, um, that's what was swimming towards you, was a shark. I don't think I can do it to a shark. Let's see here. I think it has uh, to understand you, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I, mean, I don't know if it has to understand me, but it has to hear me, and I don't think a shark's going to hear me. Uh, it, is it I don't know a lot about sharks. <laughs> okay, it says it's immune if it can't hear you, or if it's immune yeah. to being charmed. It doesn't say... As, as long as it can hear you, basically, yeah, it's fine. It I don't think a you. shark can hear you underwater. Uh, at that distance, especially with all the fighting going on, probably not. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna uh, do cutting words against this uh, other little bastard over. Okay. Yeah. So we'll target this guy, and uh, we'll go ahead and that's your cast. reaction for this turn. So yeah, that's my reaction. Uh, uh, I, cut, no, it's not. Wait, you, mean, you mean vicious mockery? Oh, uh, yes, vicious mockery. That's okay. the one. All right, go ahead and target him and hit the cast button. You scaly bastard. You got a 7 plus 1, so he failed. And then we do damage. Yep. And effects. Uh, <laughs> so, this one was actually trying to flee. He was already trying to escape. Oh, after being I don't really away. care. <laughs> and, and you uh, shout down you know, some, some uh, mockery at him, which is enough to uh, explode his brain with psychic damage. Ah. Toast. I'm going to turn you into a fillet of fish. <laughs> Alright, and he... Uh, that's... That was your action, and then you're attached to the wall. Any bonus actions? Um, uh, let's see. Do I have to see someone for bardic inspiration? Yeah, uh, I think so. Let's look. And did Samson use it? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and that cast another you. bardic. Okay. They don't have to see you. They just have to hear you. Yeah. I'm going to cast another bardic inspiration on Samson since he looks like he might be he in actually, trouble. He still has the last one. He didn't use it. Oh, he never used it? All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to cast Bardic up. Inspiration yeah, on Norok. So, okay. And... Doo -doo -doo. That's... That effect on him. Here's another one. Alright, no. your turn. Yeah, I'm not 100% positive, but he may have already had it. <laughs> uh, Norok didn't have it, but Samson... So right. Basically, both uh, Norok and Samson have it now. Cool. Alright, uh, then it is Sarah's turn. But you hit that button anyways. What's Sarah doing? Okay. Judging by the fact that Samson was sick, could I tell how much he weighed? How much he weighs? Yes. Uh, he's not wearing his gear. You would estimate he's probably about 180 pounds. Oof. And I... Like 40? How much? Um... 220 pounds. How much can the broom... Ha uh, were you trying to pick him out of the water with the broom? Yeah, it's 200 pounds. A little bit over. You can give it a shot. It's just going to be, you know, the risk of you getting pulled off of the broom and falling into the water as well. And then being shark food. Yeah, right. Fine. <laughs> I, f I feel like, as a person, I'd be much more scared of giant... F of big fish men than a shark in the water. Uh, maybe. All right, so, you, uh, so remember, though, you have the the uh, very awkward um, handling situation of holding onto the broom with your mage hand, which mm -hmm. isn't going to do you any good. You see what I'm saying? Well, wait, can't I just hold it with my left hand and get low enough to the water for Samson to try to crawl on? Uh, okay. You should do it do it like a helicopter. Or to... <laughs> Drop a rope down? <laughs> no, no, no. You know where they hold onto the side of the helicopter? Oh, like a fucking in Contra? movies, like yeah, like a Contra uh, Alien Wars, exactly. Uh, whichever that one is, the Super Super Nintendo, uh, holding off to the missile, and you jump from missile to oh. missile. That was so stupid. It's best shit ever, man. That's realistic. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. I, I see where you're going with this, though, Becky. Uh, all right, so you you fly over there. Uh, we still need some kind of a check for you, so it's probably going to be maybe dexterity to to kind of fly the room with the additional weight being thrown on there as you're trying to lift <laughs> him up out of the water. So give me a dex check. And beat a 12. Oh! <laughs> oh! No! Uh, poor Becky is, is, is not doing so great for this fight. Uh, the, the dragon's breath was good, but uh, uh, he he sees you. He's kind of kind of just flailing in the water there, uh, still like trying to get his uh, great sword thrown back over his uh, back into the sheath with one arm, uh, while he's kind of just just batting at the water, trying to keep himself above the waves. Um, but the waves just keep kind of going up and down. So this this uh, dance of trying to get down uh, low enough for him to, to be close. Uh, he reaches up and grabs the broom, but as soon as you start to lift away, uh, you didn't roll low enough for you to fall off. But as soon as you start to, to pull away, uh, his hands are wet and just slips right off of the broom. Uh, and he's still uh, kind of dangling there in the water, just below you. And Pogo can't help but giggle a little bit of that. Oh, shit, shit. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang uh, on. Well, never mind. So I, I, I had that roll on Sarah because it's more fun to have the player roll than have an NPC roll something. Uh, the inspiration is on Samson, not on Sarah. 
if it was on yeah. Sarah, she'd be able to add the inspiration in this particular case. Uh, you know what, just, just for, because it's only fair, uh, since Justin used it anyways, I'll give him a chance to try to, no, he rolled a five, so let's, uh, with a D8 from, that's uh, a 10, no, nah, it still wouldn't be enough. So he, he rolled a five with a D20, and then from the Bardic Inspiration was another five for a total of 10, did not beat the 12, so he, he slipped, his hand slips off of it as you lift away, so you're five feet above him now, uh, in, you know, above the waves there, you see the shark coming. I don't think I can do anything with bonus action. So... Just yell, good luck. Um, <laughs> racist asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now wait. Can I use shield on somebody else if I'm like five feet from them? If I'm right next to them? Uh, it's only supposed to be on you. Let's see. Uh, nah, it only protects you, is what it says appears and protects you. Alright, well then I guess I'm just going to hover here and if he gets his ass back up here on his <laughs> Okay. I mean, it's, it's not your problem, God, it's that, his problem, right? That broom is super handy, by the way. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually, it's broken a little bit because it would be overpowered, so it's, it's a broken <laughs> broom, narratively I said it's broken, uh, so that it isn't so overpowered as to cause balance problems. Um, it is the shark's turn. The shark is going to swim at the uh, human meat that is... Not the dead guy? Seems uh, very not shark-like. Well, okay, so you don't know this. Uh, 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 Artemis knows this. Oh, the shark, they keep the sharks. sharks. Are, yeah, the sharks are their pets. The sharks are, are right. friends of the Sawaga. Uh, in fact, they can uh, command them even. So this, this shark was in the water specifically to grab anybody that fell overboard. This sounds like a fight on Final Fantasy when you first get the ship. A couple of sharks and like ten Sawagans at the same time. Sawagans. In the exactly first what Final Fantasy? Yeah. The Sawagans all over the place and, and the little Cornelia, Cornelia Sea or whatever. And then there's Cornelia. sharks. I remember the sea. Yeah. I, don't remember, I don't remember Sawagan from Final Fantasy at all. Yeah. What there's regular ones. There's, there were little green guys and then there was red ones that were stronger than they were wizard ones or whatever later on in the game that were blue, I think. Huh. They were all over the fucking place, and like every five seconds you'd get a fight in the ocean, remember? And it was uh, always like ten of those fucking things at the same time. Yeah, they I were remember, weak, but I they were annoying. not liking the, uh, the the ship in that just because you would still constantly get in, in fights. Uh, mm -hmm. But I didn't remember the Sawagan in it. Uh, the bite definitely hits. That's not going to be good. Because uh. he's already blood, or he's already got blood, so he has, uh, or already bleeding, so he has uh, blood frenzy. Which is. 30, ow, fuck. Oh. He rolled 37. Uh, Samson is in pretty bad shape as this shark comes. You, you, uh, uh, Sarah, you're the only one that can really see this. Uh, Pogo, actually, if you look over your shoulder, you do see this other halfling floating through the air uh, that uh, come over trying to rescue that knight that had just tried to help you. Um, but this shark just sails in and takes a nasty bite out of its hip, like just basically a big old chunk out of the side of uh, Samson's side. Oh. Um, like the kind where if he's pulled out of the water, you might see intestines through there. Uh, oh. just a, like a big old gaping uh, gut wound. Uh, he, he's, he won't survive another bite, I'll tell you that. Like, that's how bad it looks. <laughs> um, and you guys kind of need him, so... Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Uh, 26, he's actually still prone. He's going to stand his way up. Uh, and Norok is about the only thing in front of him for him to, to get to. Uh, you know what, actually, seeing everything else is already all jacked up. Uh, he's not even going to do that. He sees the giant in front of him and says that that doesn't look like a, a good way to die, so he's going to run over towards the edge here uh, and then hop over into the water, and he can go 5, 10, 15, he has full swim speed so he can make it to here. Uh, he is gone. He swims off. Okay. This one's already dead anyways. Uh, that one is the one that got zapped. Uh, he's still back there. So, hmm. all right, Norwalk's turn. Okay. Uh, the deck is pretty clear. You don't see, there's, you, you still hear fighting uh, on the uh, quarter deck in the back where, where Orvin's fighting some of them. Uh, you can't quite see him. He's just a little bit too short in the back there. Um, but you still hear All fighting right. back there, but you, at least the last time you did see him, he was doing okay. Uh, but you do okay. know that uh, Samson is overboard and it just, you know, a very, very painful, bloody uh, uh, scream. You run to the edge, you see the water is just red all around him. All right, I'm going to look out and see uh, and double check the little guy that fell over the side. I see him standing or like, holding on to the side. He looks like he's here on the thing because I don't know his name yet, right? Correct. Nope. He is he is attached to the side of the ship. 
Okay, and then Sarah is on her broom still, right? She was trying to help, but she didn't fall off when she was trying to help Samson, Correct. right? She's still on the okay. broom. Okay. Yes. She didn't roll low enough to fall off of the broom. She just rolled low enough to not succeed at pulling uh, Samson out of the water. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is, uh, how does a bardic inspiration work anyway? Does this give me advantage on a roll or whatever? No. So every any attack, uh, Justin, correct me on this if it's wrong. It's uh, attack roll, check, or save. Yes. So yeah, any any three. Okay. Right. So Perfect. which and that's a one d eight, I yeah. believe. Yeah, it's a d eight that you would get to add to any of those. Cool. So what I'm going to do is uh, not throw it at him, but in the water close to Samson. So I'm not trying to hit him with it. Obviously, I'm not flinging it at him, but I'm going to throw Vulcan like underhand kind of. Well, so it's not going to hit him. You know, I'm not going to spiral it at him. Uh, throw it at Samson in the water as close to him as I possibly can, and tell him to hold onto it, and grab onto it as quick as he can. And then as soon as he does grab on what he's capable of, I'm going to pull it back to me and bring it back to me. All right. This is going to be really risky. Um, and how this works is it has to be his turn for him to grab onto it. He can't do it like as a, you know, outside of his turn. Uh, okay. So you're going to throw that down there, which means it's basically, it's going to start sinking immediately. So, I mean, you can still call it back to you, but if, it, if you call it back to you and it's too low, it's going to come up through the ship. Like, you see what I'm saying? See what okay. cause problems here? So. Yeah. So it may work fine, but if he's if he rolls really low, which he does, uh, no, actually, he, he has inspiration too. Well, he used it. He used it trying to oh. grab the grab the broom and failed. Well, he okay. used it and got a ten. He didn't fail. He just rolled slightly too low. So I mean, still failed, just not. You know. Anyways, um, so you can give it a shot, but there's still the the potential risk that uh, if he fails his roll and it sinks, it's going to sink at. 15 feet per round, I think it's about that. Uh, which means that by the time his turn comes back around, or when you go to call it back to you, you could end up cleaving it at the bottom of the ship. Okay, you do realize I have a few whips, right? I could just send down a whip. Or we have rope! Oh. But you've got to get way over there, though, Hux. Artemis is still at the forecastle. Uh-huh. But yeah. rope is like a normal thing most people have on them. Does yeah. Nora not have any? Do you? See. You could that that try. Well, well, okay. So, narratively, yeah, of people. course, this is stuff that Nora would having to be you know thinking about unless Artemis yelling it over to him and it was a free action. But uh, uh, you know, get a rope or something like that would be fine. You could maybe tie the rope to Vulcan so that you could pull it back up instead of calling it back to you, or just okay. you know, tie it to anything and throw a rope to him. You know. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Then I will. Actually, come over here, and hopefully he doesn't whack Pogo on the way up. But I'll throw a rope out to him. <laughs> so <to> direct Pogo. <laughs> Narratively, knock Pogo right back down into the water. Yeah, and then he can. Uh, are he you? Can grab the rope. Are you just throwing a rope to Samson then? Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, you could probably throw a rope from right next. <laughs> <laughs> Narratively, you see one of your teammates doing something stupid, so y'all over <laughs> to get a rope. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't know what's in Norak's mind that he was going to throw, you know, Vulcan to do it. But it's not even that it's stupid. It's a good idea. It's a really creative idea. It's just there's there's high risk, you know, that it, when uh, the Vulcan risk back. is the stupid part. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, I mean, if it hits the bottom, I'm going to save this one person risk hitting the bottoms for us to. But the the rope it, at least has a you know if it does fail, it's not going to hurt anything other than you know maybe Samson dying. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you toss him the rope. Make a uh, make a uh, just give me a simple attack roll, actually. Okay. For you throwing, you know, a bundled up rope uh, out to him. No, you just uh, so you just add the inspiration the extra d8 or something. Or do you yeah. want me to add something? Uh, just okay. well, make a. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fine. Uh, go. If you well, I mean, I'll just tell you that that would make it anyways. You wouldn't need the inspiration oh, yeah. for that. Um, yeah. You're only throwing it 15 feet. Uh, so you throw it out uh, like um, just a, 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 a loop of rope, like where it's still curled. You're basically, you hold one end of it and just throw the bundle out to him, and it goes over him like a life uh, preserver style, kind of just over his head and around him. Um, and you yell at him to, to hold on to it. Yeah. While you're holding it in. Okay. Uh, anything yeah, else? And I'm just gonna, yeah, and then just be ready for him to start pulling. I'll pull him in as soon as obviously he starts moving or whatever, you know, narratively. And I'm strong enough to pull him, obviously. So, okay. Unless. I trip or something. So. Okay. Uh, Pogo, a rope falls over your shoulder and then smashes <laughs> into the water behind you. Um, and you, you can tell, obviously, that the knight that was trying to help you is uh, about to be pulled up, which is going to put tension against that rope, which is going to smash you into the side of the ship. Uh, Fun. So, uh, <laughs> Samson's turn. Uh, he, I mean, the rope was around him, so we'll just uh, give him a strength check to try to pull himself in. 
Hey, he rolled. He rolled well. Finally. All right. So he grabs the grabs the rope, and and it, like he's, he's you can see the weakness in his eyes just from having you know this gaping wound um, and blood pouring out of it into the into this trail behind him. Uh, but he is pulled along, like pulling himself up with you uh, up along the side of the ship directly. I'm gonna put him next to uh, Pogo just because Pogo would have the opportunity to kind of you know sidestep or uh, uh, side look sure. to get out of the way. Um, and you are up both up on the side of the ship. Uh, Samson's not quite out of the water. He couldn't, you know, with his movement, uh, make the rest of the way up because he just, he's not strong enough to be able to climb at the moment. Uh, but he's sure. a- enough out of there. Uh, Artemis, turn. Oh, okay. Um, how far away is the guy at the... Um, from you, that would be quite a ways. Let's see. Hang on. Is he within 80? Yeah, probably about 75, 80, right about to where he is, yeah. There, you know what? I'm just going to move, just for simplicity's sake, I'll move this guy up here, and that's him. So use uh, seven on the map there. Okay. This has been a long I'm gonna, fight. I'm going to move to here, <laughs> and then just sw- smack him with... With what? My short bow. Okay. Go ahead and make the attack. <coughs> and that hits. Uh, he's uh, he's the one of the ones you zapped. He did have a lot of health though. Um, the the arrow sinks into uh, into his left like through his left arm. Um, and you kind of he basically is now looking down and, and with a with a wide open mouth, uh, looking down at an arrow that's just literally through his forearm, uh, stuck halfway in. Uh, he looks in shock uh, and is let go of the wheel. Any bonus action? Perfect. Any more movement? No. All right. Then it is Pogo's turn. All right, let's see. Pogo is going to finish climbing up. How much more climbing do I have to do? Uh, give me an athletics check. Athletics check. I would say you you could actually do acrobatics, either one, whichever one's better for you. You're good enough at acrobatics with that rope there that you kind of you know push off of uh, Samson's shoulder, you know stand on his shoulder, push yourself up, even though he's bleeding out already. All right. Yeah, that's funny. So you you basically spin yourself up over the top, um, and then land on the deck. Oh, I can't click on my. There we are. Um, okay. Uh, I'm also pretty pissed at the guy who has been controlling the ship. <laughs> okay. So that was uh, five feet, really, for you to get over the top, especially with that high acrobatics okay. roll. So. So you, ah. could, you could run up the uh, the staircase in front of you, which would put you on the quarter deck in the back. It. Yeah, there so you go. I got yep. some all zoomed in. You're fine. It would be oh, right here, see. basically. So that would be right like there. 20 feet to get to you, like five more feet. Uh, no, this is fine. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to yell at him for knocking me off using uh, my uh, vicious mockery. So... Okay. All right, you green bastard. I'm not a very great swimmer, and now I'm soaking wet. <laughs> so you can go fuck off back to wherever you came from, and I'm going to click cast. Uh, he failed. Got a 10 plus 1. And then we're going to do damage effects. There you go. Uh, he has one hit point left, so <laughs> he's not doing too good. Um... Do you have any can I also though? can I also just yell at him? <laughs> I mean, yes, that's a reaction that's not going to hurt him. But yeah, I'm just going to yell at him again and tell him he's a bastard. Okay. All right, that if your turn then. Uh, yep. Let's click that right. button. All right, Sarah, you saw Nora come to the side, and throw a rope out, uh, and pull uh, Samson back in. Uh, the little halfling that was attached to the side of the boat has jumped off uh, and, and run up to attack the other, the last remaining uh, fishman that you can see. Uh, the shark in the water is still kind of swimming in circles in the in the blood there, but he looks like he may retreat. What are you doing? Okay, I'm going to go up so I can touch Samson. Okay. I'm going to use the ring of healing surges. To let him use his hit dice? Yeah. All right, his uh, are... One hit dice. He's dead. Just one, okay. Just out of curiosity, is the captain of the ship still up there, or is he The gone captain somewhere? was never up there. So the captain, oh, okay. this was in the middle of the night, and the captain was asleep. And you did see okay. multiple fishmen go back towards the captain's cabins, uh, you know, fighting back there. And then you saw two different ones come out with corpses thrown over shoulders that hopped over over the side and swam off. Great. The only one that's up there is Orvin, the dwarf. 
that you don't know. He was just a member of the crew. Um, uh, the, you see the wounds in Samson's side beginning to kind of slowly stitch together, and the bleeding is slowing. Uh, he's still pretty badly wounded, but it doesn't look like he'll die from it. I guess I'll just hover 10 feet up. That'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, the shark, if you were to look back over, you see him kind of swimming downwards, uh, just into the darkness. You can't see him uh, anymore once he swims too low. And we are... Well, he's still got one hit point left, but he's not going to a- attempt to fight. These guys run pretty quickly anyway, so he's going to rush towards the edge unless somebody has a reaction to use it to stop him, uh, and then he dives over the side and down into the water. Actually? Oh, wait. No, I can only... Nope. Yeah, never mind. You're cutting words, is what you're looking at? Yeah, I just wanted to see exactly what it would do. I think it's only if they make a like an attack or something, yeah, right? Yeah, right, okay. right. Okay. Then he jumps overboard and back into the water. Uh, I should have that one going again, sorry. There we go. Uh, we are out of initiative order. That might be one of the longest fights we've ever had. <laughs> that was two fucking hours. Uh, they're not usually that long. Uh, but anyways, the, uh, you know, Samson climbs his way back over out of initiative. Norok, your rage begins to fade. Uh, the, the exhaustion beginning to set into your muscles as the uh, uh, lactic acid builds up. Uh, go ahead and apply your waning frenzy if you would. The minute ends out, so your dragon's breath also falls for Sarah. Uh, Samson, as soon as he's pulled up overboard, uh, just lays flat on the deck. There's still the kind of blood just pouring out of it slowly uh, as it's still kind of stitching together. Uh, the deck is, of course, awash with all of this, and there is just just gore all around you uh, where, you know, the bodies of these fishmen and the crew uh, that are, that you know, the, the few that remain, there aren't many. Uh, but basically it's a uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty bloody uh, aftermath all over the deck here um, with the, the kind of battle... Uh, haze beginning to fade um, the remaining of, the, of the, the crewmen scurry this way and that trying to kind of re-secure the flayed rigging uh, you know trying to fix the things that were that were uh, broken off and cut and so on um, do, do, do. Uh, through the, the kind of the, the moonlight the half of the blue moon and half of the uh, red moon are visible so it's kind of purple uh, purplish hue uh, you see the Orvin the, the beardless dwarf um, that with the scarred face. Uh, do you guys remember? Uh, pro- it won't matter right now. We'll get to that later. But basically, he does not have a beard, and his face, where his beard would normally grow, is covered in scars. And it's specifically a scarring process that's used against criminals um, to prevent dwarves from being able to grow. It's like a, like a face tattoo that says you're a criminal or a slave or anything of that sort, except specifically for beards, they scar the face so that they can't grow the beard back. Um, and, and he's got those facial scars, so you know that at least at one point, of course, he had to have been a pretty severe criminal to have earned that kind of uh, punishment. But uh, anyways, uh, you see him uh, walking down the, uh, the steps uh, toward, you know, off of the quarter deck where the wheel was, uh, and he's got a dour look, uh, kind of approaching where Samson and Norok are on the deck. Uh, is everybody gathering, like, in, in the deck where Norok and Sarah... You Currently, Pogo is actually pretending to write the ship singing, What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. That's uh, what I'm doing. Okay. It's funny you say that, because I actually have a bunch of shanties for you guys, too, uh, for, for background. So. And, and afterwards, I, I come back down to see what everyone's doing. Okay. Um, you see Samson, you know, pretty badly wounded. Everybody else, you know, with minor uh, scratches and nicks and so on. You're actually pretty pretty beat up yourself. Uh, yeah. Almost half your HPs. Um, but I got hit by a random bolt of lightning that just came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> well, you look like a fish man. That's not Artemis' fault. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in her defense, I don't think she could see me in the first place. So. Yeah, yeah, you were a little bit too short from below the deck. I was but, just uh, collateral. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 dwarf though that had been up there with you uh, has a you know a very dour look on his face and he's uh, just covered in blood spatter. Um, he he kind of turns, makes his way uh, uh, over towards you guys though, and, and Samson on the deck. Um, he's he's kind of leaning over, just holding his you know he's he's not used to fighting. He's just got basically uh, hands on his knees, just leaned over like catching his breath. What are you guys doing? I'm using Healing Spirit to heal everybody up because I didn't take damage this time, so I didn't go unconscious. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, for like first time ever, Fox doesn't go unconscious in a fight. Nice. Is this not even a spell? Is this just a? Uh, it's a spell. Uh, it just cantrip or something? No, it's it's a spell, but it lasts for a whole minute. 
and anybody oh, that geez. touches it, anybody that touches it on their turn gets a D6 of healing. So basically, if it's so outside I'm of not, combat, you can. So I'm not sure if my character would know this, but would I? Could I just be like, uh, "What is that? What's going on over here?" And they can tell me how the <laughs> healing thing works. Artemis. Um, this, it's this a healing spirit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just basically saying, what what's everyone doing over here? And this looks like getting fun. healed up. You mind if I join you then? Go ahead. Appreciate it. Just and go for the spirit. You too. Why will hurt you? Who who does who's got a heart of spirit? <laughs> I love spirits, especially the ones you drink. <laughs> uh, do you mind throwing some at Sam? Well, here I'll just delete him. I'm gonna assume you're healing Samson as well, right? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get him. Okay, all right. I I just I just cleaned him off. He's fine. So everybody kind of uh, ring around the rosy standing, you know, touching this spirit um, as Artemis kind of channels, holding it in one place so that everybody can uh, uh, keep continuing to, to take these heals, uh, cleaning up the nicks and the wounds and so on. Um, Samson, uh, as he's finished up, as like, the hole in his side is kind of kind of stitching back together, he's still missing a big chunk of flesh that was bit away that wasn't, you know, restored by this, but the wounds are stitched together uh, and he's no longer bleeding out. Uh, kind of sits up a little bit, like onto one elbow, um, he says, ah, oh, that I wasn't, wasn't exactly expecting that. Um, and he looks over very sheepishly. Um, I'll, I'll tell you that, uh, go ahead and give me insight checks on Artemé and Sarah. Can I find it? Okay, I found it. Ouch. Um... I'll tell it that to, to Artemis, you probably weren't looking at him so close, especially because you were communicating with Pogo anyway. Uh, Sarah, he, he looks heartfelt. He looks legitimately very um, uh, appreciative that you tried to help. Uh, you know, even healed him when he was against the side of the ship and so on, especially after he'd been an asshole to you. Uh, but um, I, that's as much as you would get, I guess, for that role anyways. So. But he's kind of leaned up on, on, uh, on one elbow. Um, he says, is, is, our, is our equipment still there? Is, is everything still... Uh, and it's clear to you two, actually it's particular to Sarah, that he's actually asking about his chained up bag that was in his tent. I didn't see it go off? Like, I can't actually, it's... Wait, did you remove those tokens when we I fight did. it? I, I fight the, it? Yeah, I removed the tent tokens off so that they wouldn't be in the way. Um, okay, do me so, but they didn't actually go off board, did they? Well, you're the one looking, so give me, roll a, well, it'll be a d100. So what you're going to do, uh, Fox, is, because I don't usually have you guys roll these, is right click on the d10 which is third from the left. It doesn't look like a spinny triangle? Yeah, it looks like a top. Okay. Uh, right click on that, and then the top left one looks like a percent sign. It says D100 if you mouse over it. Click that. Which one? So when you right click on the D10, which is third from the left. Oh, okay, percent? Yeah, click the percent sign. That'll roll a D100. <laughs> Can I cry? Uh, you, you literally had a well. In this particular case, a one is actually as good as you could do because rolling high would have been bad in this case. Uh, oh, okay. But, but you had a one percent chance. I mean, you managed to roll ones when you have a five percent chance on d20s all the time. You literally had a one percent chance and still rolled a one. <laughs> uh, what could be more appropriate for for your naming uh, for this group? Uh, mm -hmm. You turning around though, uh, back up the steps. Uh, enough to be able to see it. Your tents and all of your gear are smashed hard against the uh, um, the side over here. I'll just draw an arrow, basically, along this wall uh, where they're smashed up against the railing. Uh, obviously waterlogged and soaked through. Um, but as you're kind of looking through everything, at least so far, everything you've looked for is there. Okay, I'm gonna look through the bag of holding and all my and my I my normal bag to make sure my potions and bottles are not. They were stopped because you rolled as, as well as you did. This is In this particular case, rolling a 99 or 100 would have been all of your shit went washed over. If it was 90 or above, the tents got washed over. If it was, or Sorry, 70 or above, the tents got washed over. 90 or above, your bags and stuff like that also got washed over. Basically, the higher you rolled, the worse it would have been. So you rolled as well as you could. All of your potions and everything are still stoppered. Everything appears to be intact. Uh, none of the vials are broken. Everything seems to be fine. Yay! Okay. So in this one time, you rolling a natural one is actually a good thing. Okay. Um, so, do you, I mean, Samson was asking, do you 
Oh, yeah, you know. I call down. Everything's fine. So, uh, the, uh, he, he kind of just nods, and, and you don't hear him. He says thank you, and, and uh, you know, the guys that are closer to him do hear him, but uh, he just doesn't have the strength in him to, to shout it too loud, uh, especially over the waves and everything. Um, but as you guys are uh, kind of down here anyways, Orvin stands up and looks around. Um, he's uh, obviously surveying the scene here a bit. Um, and one of the uh, remaining crew walks up to him and just gives him, like he walks from the captain's cabin area up towards Orvin uh, and he just kind of shakes his head and Orvin kind of just just uh, sets his jaw a little bit, looks back towards you guys. Um, he kind of has a little half-hearted smile and he wipes some of the blood off of his face. Uh, his eyes are kind of kind of still down towards the um, cast at the deck there. He says, awful business that. Um, Looks like Captain Furka and First Mate Carey, uh, they're, they're both, doesn't look like they made it anyway. So we may, uh, we have maybe, and he's looking around again, about half the crew that we set sail with. Um, and so far, and he looks at the, the uh, other crewmates that have come back up from the, from the decks below. Uh, he says probably half that of the passengers. Uh, this doesn't bode well for the reputation of the favored winds, uh, but I guess we'll, we'll have to make do with what we've got. Well, it's not really your fault you got attacked. Like, come on, it could have been any ship. Can I can I roll for persuasion to tell him that uh, it's okay? We're gonna go ahead and get everything taken care of for you. We'll 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 take over the ship and it'll be fine. We'll handle everything. Uh, Just kind of d- decide that I'm gonna I'm gonna be temporary captain. Can I persuade <laughs> him to do that? Uh, you can give it a shot. Go ahead. Go ahead and roll persuasion. The DC will be pretty high because you know you're not even a sailor, but uh, and you you know you were a passenger. But I'm not sure they know that I'm not a sailor. <laughs> Uh, could be fair, sure. I mean, you, you don't uh, uh, come off as one, but uh, yeah, let's see. Also, for the whole um, stupid idea thing, um, being like an ancient relic hunter, the reason I say that is because in dangerous situations, if any of your plans put you at more risk than what you already are, I consider that extremely stupid. Which <laughs> is the only reason I said that. It all worked well, out. It was, yeah. it was still a good idea. I liked the idea. It was very creative. Oh, the idea was great, yeah. but from from Artemis' perspective, anything that puts you more at risk is just stupid. Well, Artemis, in- it, it, narratively, though, Artemis just saw Norox, you know, kind of rushing towards the edge, and he was still holding Vulcan, his axe, in one hand, sure, but, I mean, you wouldn't have assumed that he was going to throw it and try to have him pick it up. You just assumed that he was using it to fight. So, I mean, narratively, <laughs> Artemis wouldn't have known that that was the attempt anyway. He ended up just throwing a, a rope as you shouted to him to you know, well, grab a rope. Well, I see anyway. Sam. I would have seen Samson go overboard. Yeah. So him still holding it and not looking for a rope, I could kind of guess it, but maybe not entirely. So I would just like scream at him to get a rope as a <laughs> safer. Well, I mean, that's what he ended up doing. So you shouted, grab a rope, and that's what Norak did. So it all worked out. There. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, the the surround the the crew that are around you are beginning to kind of uh, uh, you know grab bodies and begin to pull them towards the edge. Of course, most of these folk are just halflings, and these uh, fish people all, you know, hollow bones and, and uh, you know, aren't super heavy, so they're easy enough to pull. Uh, but some of the, you know, the crew and then the, uh, the passengers that were below decks are a little heavier, so they're, they're kind of doing their best to clean the decks. Um, over time, they, you know, they're, they're mostly successful at pulling all of this off. Um, Orvin, though, didn't seem uh, all that uh, keen on your idea of, of you kind of taking over as captain. Uh, uh, he says, uh, uh, he says, really, I mean, I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the offer and all, but, uh, not sure how many of these small folk have experienced captain in anything larger than a fish boat anyway. So I suppose I'll have all to, right. I suppose that's I'll have fine. To, I will uh, accept first mate. secondary in command. <laughs> <laughs> he says, he says, that's, I mean, that, that, that'll work. That's fine. He says, I suppose I'll have to man the wheel. Until we find ourselves a new captain, anyway. So, so if you, uh, if you've got any sailing experience, you can, you can certainly help. Oh yeah, I've got plenty of it. <laughs> ah, for years. <laughs> uh, all right, give me a deception check. Uh, he rolled low. He rolled a nine. So he looks to have believed you potentially, uh, <laughs> even though you're just lying. Completely. He doesn't know that I'm not telling the truth. <laughs> this is kind of where we're at. Yeah, that's exactly. It. He doesn't know that you're lying necessarily. So. Um, sure, but now if you don't actually know much about a boat, your <laughs> lie will become evident. <laughs> ah, it'll be fine. And he is a sailor, so he will know, you know, immediately that you... Uh, Pretty quick. Yeah. I'll just come up with, uh... Wait, someone's calling me? Yeah, I gotta go over here now. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> um, 
He says, uh, so, I mean, we'll, we'll do our best to get you there. The, the crew obviously starts singing this dirge um, as they're gathering, the, the, removing the remainder of the crew and so on, including the captain, uh, and tossing them overboard. Um, he says, I guess me and the, the, the halfling here, we can probably get you to the Empire, though. That's, that's where you're heading, right? We're, we're I mean, that's where, that's where I'm heading. <laughs> Pogo just nods. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Unless anyone else has any other ideas. <laughs> you just said I'm yes, so you guys sorry. are going to the Empire? Because, I mean, the arrangement you guys had, only the captain knew about. Orvin didn't know about it. So unless you tell him, he's going to sail you to Eiffelstead. We're looking for another ship out here. Um, you know what, Samson? Can Pogo ask? As well. Can Pogo ask why? Yeah. Are you, can Pogo just say like, what? Uh, what do you mean we're looking for another ship? I'm just gonna look at Samson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Samson. Uh, so, so we'll just have an NPC versus NPC conversation here. Then Samson talking to Orbit. <laughs> uh, uh, Samson. Um, still kind of just leaning up on one elbow, not, you know, still laying down basically on the deck, uh, looks up at Orvin. Uh, he says, I, I'd made arrangements with, with the captain to look for a, a ship that's, that's lost at sea out here. There's an important object on there that we, we really need. Uh, it's it's of, of vital importance. Uh, Orvin kind of looks up at, at Norok and, and at Sarah and Artemis. He says, you guys, I mean, you, you came on with him, right? I mean, is this, you're all together? This, this is what you guys needed? Yeah. Yeah, pretty important. Uh, he looks around at the crew then, um, and then back up at you guys, and he just shrugs. He says, well, uh, Furka was a bastard anyway. I mean, I, I don't see any reason that we got to make the trip there, especially after an attack like that. So, I mean, do we do you have an idea where this, this ship is that you're looking for? I mean, really, most of the people on board are dead anyways. We might as well go take a quick vacation. <laughs> he kind of grins at you. He says, he says, I think I'll like you for a first mate. I mean, this way we've got plenty of wine and food at least. <laughs> Plenty of time. Less mouths to feed. He says, well, all right, I, I, I see. I suppose it's no different. I mean, we best make quick work of it, though. I mean, we won't survive another night visit from those devils if they come back again. He says, H how do you mean to find it? A lost ship on the Caliador, and that's, that's worse than a pebble in an ore pile. I just look at him with a side glong glass. Um, I was hoping to try locating spell, but I'm not sure what was in the ship I could try and locate that's not in... In or on the ship. Uh, Can you use your spell to find, like, just an actual ship? No, because the problem uh, is it find this ship because it's the closest ship. Uh, so I can't just... Do we know what it. kind of ship it was? <laughs> <laughs> Specifically search for a brigantine ship, which is... There the, we go, maybe. The nearest brigantine, although that's a trade ship anyway, so you might find, you know, any number of them around here that are closer than the Emperor of the Waves. Um, Basically. Samson, Samson looks up at you, he says... I think I can help with that, um, but really, we're, I, I need I need to rest first. At this, I need to, to recuperate a little bit. It took a lot out of me. And he kind of looks down at his eyes. He says, "He says literally." <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I look at Sa I look at Samson after that joke and give him a little nod of appreciation. <laughs> uh, so I mean, I like this guy. This guy right here is pretty funny. He did try to save you a couple times too, or try to help you anyway. So it was it was a uh, so, you know trade off. But. So far, he's basically my best friend out of this group. <laughs> Except he's a horrible, horrible racist also. So. Yeah, I don't know that yet. I just I just <laughs> fought fair. some fish with him and saw him get bit by a shark. Yeah, trying to save you. I mean, when he was in yeah, water. it wasn't too bad. Um, so he said, you know, that he needs a rest. You guys are, you know, it's up to you. You don't have to take another rest, but it, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. Yeah. You gonna finish your rest? All right. Yeah. All right. Then uh, what's Pogo's deck is is or Pogo's uh, cabin rather is is below decks and is covered in fish blood. Uh, when you if if you go back down there anyways, the corpse is removed. The crew has pulled it out. Uh, two of them carrying the corpse over their shoulders up the stairs. Uh, but your bed is destroyed. You know. Oh. So where's well, Pogo's I mean, there's, there's plenty of free space, so. I'll just go. Do, do, do. Out of curiosity, is this ship? Are they all pretty much exactly the same? All the rooms? 
Yeah, the cabins like are, a, except for the back ones oh. here. In fact, now that now that it's free, like you guys could mm -hmm. have explored the ship if you wanted. Um, there's you know so few people on here now too, but uh, let me get the masks removed here for you. There you go. Cool. Oh, okay. Oh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, there's a few. The cheaper uh, cabins in the back were three beds to a room in the very back, uh, and then there's one larger room that is you know, like five beds and so on. Uh, but basically, yeah, I'll mostly. take this one. Uh, that's the captain's cabin, which is similarly covered in blood. But that's, uh, uh, I mean, you can. It's not going to matter. Orvin doesn't care. He's going to go back to his bunk anyway. Hey, you know, I'm first mate. That's pretty close. <laughs> well, if the if the captain, even the acting captain, isn't going to take it, then the first mate can have the captain's cabin. That would make some sense. So. Mm -hmm. I'll just go there. And okay. Uh, the rest of you guys, uh, I mean, you have your tents. They're all so soaking wet. Uh, you don't necessarily need them. You could just, you know, find a place to, to lean against a wall and finish your rest. Up to you guys. I'm gonna grab my stuff and go in here. Is that another bed in there? Yes. Are, this is is this gonna try to be a long rest then? Yeah, this will be a long rest. All right. Samson, looking at Norak, he says, he says, I, I don't know that I have the energy to even move from here. Do you mind just grab me a pillow and something soft to, to throw over me? Yeah, no problem. We'll all go. Grab some shit. Okay. Uh, I'm going back. to put my tent to try and dry and like hang it up to dry. Grab my all the okay. other stuff, including Norok's bag, and put in here just so it doesn't get like all. Okay. That's if it's okay with Norok. You mean yeah. Norok's like bag, like his equipment, or the you're talking about the leather, the chain bag? Oh, that too. Like, uh, like I'll just put everything in this room that I can. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Samson does ask Norok if you would keep an eye on the on the bag for him, the chained up bag. Okay. And then when you bring it to him, he pulls himself into uh, one of the, um, uh, like, skiffs, one of the little rowboats, uh, and they're secured to the deck, and he, you know, pulls the blanket over him and, and just tries to lay down to sleep inside the boat. All right, uh, let me go steal that room. Uh, Orvin is at the wheel. Um, the crew is working on, you know, repairs as best they can and so on. Um, if you guys are done for the night, anything else you're doing before taking the rest? Uh... Well, since everyone was tired, I was going to maybe introduce myself to everybody, but I feel like we passed that. <laughs> well, I'll do I mean, it in the morning. Yeah, exactly. You can still do it in the morning. It's, you know, yeah, I'll do it in the morning. You're, you're, right now, you're just another person that's on this ship, but you can you know, definitely have a, a minute to actually introduce yourself if you're going to go along with the group here. Um, assuming you're going to. I'll go ahead and apply the long rest, though. Okay, how much of a rest have we had so far? Uh, you were three hours, maybe, into the rest at that point. Okay, Not and I normally... Not your full trance, but... Yeah, so I'm just gonna, like, because we just had a battle, I'm probably just gonna read a bit more, um, review the recipe for Sarah's stuff, and then make another batch. Okay. And um, play with the coin again before I take another hour. Out of out of curiosity, the coin that you're spinning, are you using that, that coin of certainty? Do you, do you remember that you got that? Yeah, the coin that that's always comes up Okay, I figured that's what it was, but I just wanted to make sure. Um... All right, uh, give me another uh, sleight of hand check, and I'll put it on your sheet here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay. Barely. Okay. Uh, this is a 1S20. All right. You feel like you're getting better at it. It's still going to take some time, but you feel like you're, you're getting there. Uh, with, you know, with practice, you're getting slightly better each time. Um, the morning comes, though. Uh, it's, you know, still a little bit morose. The, the, the crew isn't quite uh, uh, happy just yet, of course. Um, did you change your prepared spells, Artemy? Or do you need to? I haven't changed them, but I do need to add locate object. Go ahead. So it's morning now, right? Yeah. So, so I'm gonna sun, go out here and the, the real I'd quick, like to go ahead. You, you in just a second here. Just uh, the sun's coming up over the, the peaks in the east uh, through the cloud cover. The sea breeze is it's it's the sea itself is calm, uh, but there's healthy winds in the sails. It's a little bit chilly. Uh, it's only been about a month since uh, the rest of the natural ones here were out in the Caliadorn, but autumn has obviously set in. Uh, but you're far enough northwest now that you don't see the Vavian blockade to the south. Um, you do see occasional ships off in the distance, so that are just traveling along the Imperial coast. So, go ahead. 
I was just going to say I'm going to go out and see how Samson's doing and introduce myself as Pogo and let him know that, uh, uh, ask him, you know, how, how, what are they, just generally, you know, how they know each other and what they're up to. Just kind of general chit chat conversation. Sure. Um, it's how they, like the group he was with when you came on the ship? Yeah. Okay. Because you did see him standing with the rest of the group, of course, when you yeah. first boarded the ship. Uh, when you, when so the more of just general tenure. curiosity. Sure. Just. Uh, I've already kind of made friends with him a little bit, so I thought I'd go say hi and see how he's doing. Sure. Uh, he is reading a, a very well-worn book. In fact, actually, when he closes the book to talk to you, uh, he, when he snaps it shut, uh, you can see where his handprint has, has kind of pulled, like, brought off the letter, uh, the leather of the binding. But that's how often he must read this book. Uh, but he kind of closes it and, and just reaches a hand out to shake yours. Uh, he's, he's sitting up kind of slightly in the in the ship there, or in the uh, boat. He looks actually okay. Um, you do notice, though, that his eyes are severely rimmed red, um, uh, almost sickly. Uh, in fact, here, I'll give you a VA for him. Uh, everybody else has seen this VA a lot, but this is what Perfect. he looks like. Um, and his eyes are very badly red. So. All right. Uh, but uh, he shakes your hand, though. Uh, looks seems very, you know, appreciative for for your um, uh, uh, concern. I guess um, he says, "Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it was nothing." The, the, the maker insists that we try to help our. Um, and he kind of caught, he catches himself there. And give me an insight check, just Pogo. Uh, yeah, not with that. Um, yeah, he, he kind of catches himself, but you don't you don't really infer what he was you know trying to say. Um, but he he kind of resumes and said he says he says um, so you know I, I just I just did what anybody else would do in that situation. Um, I mean, as for how we know each other, well, uh, we are on an important mission. Um, are you familiar with the Crow Blinders? He says. Somewhat. So the Crow Blinders had a, a mission um, to recover some refugees from from Al Qadir to the south from from Babi. Um, and we are trying to get to this ship to do just that. Uh, and if we fail at this, a lot of people are going to die. So that's how I know these oh. Sounds pretty intense. Yeah, so your, your help was much appreciated because it wasn't just my life that you were uh, helping there. It was all of theirs. All right. Interesting. Is this, so you're going to be the first mate now? Don't tell anyone, but I have no idea what I'm doing. I just thought it would be fun. <laughs> Uh, he chuckles. Uh, he says, well, good luck uh, with that. I, I don't, I'm afraid I don't know much about sailing, so I don't know that I can help you. Appreciate you keeping that quiet between you and me. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, no, if, if everyone else is still kind of sleeping in their own rooms, I'm not going to go in there and do anything. Uh, what are you guys doing? Yeah, everybody else. Uh, you know what, actually, for Artemis, nothing for you. But Norok, uh, you're going to roll with advantage. Uh, Sarah and Pogo, uh, give me con saves. Con uh, checks, actually, con checks. Norok with advantage. Uh, why this check? Uh, you'll seasickness? Have just seasickness, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and <laughs> and I, I with, with advantage. No, you had it. Oh, you had disadvantage. Oh, I did? Hang on. Oh, oh you're because my friend here was still on. on. You're exhausted. Yeah. Still on. Okay. Uh, <coughs> it doesn't show. Well, okay. Your second roll is fine. Um, so everybody succeeds. Uh, in one case, just barely. Uh, Artemis would not have it because she sailed before, so she already has her sea legs. But uh, yeah, I would say the in the morning when you guys kind of wake up from it, each of you have this kind of brief moment of uh, like feeling like the, like your your non-existent breakfast is trying to come up, uh, but you all fight it off um, enough that, that you kind of feel like you you know accustomed enough to being on the ship. Uh, to not have to deal with seasickness, um, which would have been particularly bad for a couple of you, but uh, uh, Norak would have had advantages for, for being a Yogg, but uh, Artemis, having been on a ship and already has her sea legs, would not be a problem for her. So. Uh, but uh, that's it, so what are you guys doing? It's morning time. The crew okay, so is just... long up and, and moving around. The sun's up over the Doreen Peaks in the east. What are you guys doing? Hopefully no one has motion sickness. Yeah, like, you wouldn't have to worry about it. You've already, you know, been on ships enough. Uh, but at least, you know, if everybody's gathering anyways, then, uh, you know, everybody seems to be okay. Oh, no, emotion sickness and sea sickness are two different things. Yeah, sure. I guess I, I never really think about that, I suppose. I suppose it would be. Um, but as far as uh, uh, mechanically, though, I'm, I'm not going to have, you know, a separate role for emotion sickness, too. 
probably would have noticed that long before because you've been sailing for you know 12 hours at this point. Yeah. What are Sarah and Artemy and Norak doing? I'm gonna wait in the room until after Artemy leaves and then check to see how my arms are. Okay. Oh, I would give her the uh, second bottle of salve and tell her that I'm gonna make another one, another couple later, because they're better fresh, and then ask if she wants anything to eat. Okay. Not hungry in the morning, especially after you feel like you're gonna vomit? Yep. Um, the stuff, by the way, for, for Artemy, I'll just whisper to Artemy. Uh, the stuff you make, you call based on a Lethalin word. There you go. Oh shit, sorry. There you go. Aladicath is what it's called. Um, but okay. uh, Artemy hands you the, the salve, you check your arm. Um, it has it hasn't had too much time because you actually checked it, you know, six hours earlier. So it hasn't really moved too much from when you f first put that previous version on there. Um, which it's been since then because you finished your rest, it would have been five to six hours since then, and it doesn't look like it's moved. Now, it hasn't been very much time, so you can't necessarily attribute it to this ointment, the salve helping or not. You don't really know yet. Yeah, I think she'd still probably be freaking out, though, sure. and apply some more and just stay at the cabin. Okay. Is that too loud? And... No, not for me. Okay. All right, then uh, what's Nork doing? I'm going to get up, and I'm assuming Samson's still out there on the deck. Ask him. He's still laying in, right. the, yeah, in the boat. All he's right, he's so sitting up. He's, he, he looks okay. He's just sitting up now. Okay. I'm just asking him, all right, so how are we supposed to find the ship out here? Any, any way we can figure it out? Uh, he calls uh, Artemy. You're on the deck as well, right? Yeah. And he kind of beckons you over as well. Okay. Um, he says, uh, I mean, it's, it's something we need to talk about for sure. So, I mean, I appreciate you asking. Uh, you mentioned the you have a, a certain capability to locate things. Yep. He says, well, I left behind a small bag. Um, and it's it should still be on there as far as I know. Uh, it had, It's a, a bag that has some gems inside of it. Uh, if I give you some description of it, do you like? Do you think that would work? Uh, it would, but we'd have to be within a thousand feet. Yeah, a thousand feet. Yeah, you were talking three football fields. You're nowhere near that. You'd be able to see a ship in that distance. What it does do, though, is gives you a general uh, compass direction, so north, south, east, west, and you could recast it from time to time to see if you, you know, basically narrow your way in eventually triangulated a little bit um, but you would basically you would be kind of combing the area for a while until you find it yeah so I'd have to know which kind of gems and a description of the there's at least 10 rubies in there unless things have been taken out of there and they're about yay size and you hold his hand up about an inch apart okay uh, don't we have a few rubies I don't know do you Unless I dated a girl named Ruby once. <laughs> Samson, great sorry. Person. He says, "I don't know. I don't know if that'll help." <laughs> he says, "But I mean, it's it's better than nothing. We can certainly give it a shot." Because the alternative is sailing back and forth. You know, just, just combing the region for a few days until we find it. Yeah, I thought we had rubies, but maybe Sarah or someone else has them in their inventory then? I don't remember rubies. You guys had a ruby-hilted knife, um, but as far as gems, I remember some tiger's eye, I think. Yeah, those tiger's eye, there's a blue quartz and a few others. Yeah. Okay, so it must have been the dagger. Yeah, the dagger, you had a ruby-hilted dagger for a while. I don't know if you still have it or not. It might be, we sold it. it. Did you? Okay. I think we sold it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I should be able to locate that as long as there's no other like gems on the ship. He says, I mean, if you specifically, the bag would have my um, uh, initials. Uh, what's the word? Monograms? Yeah, monogrammed on the side. So, I mean, you could try the bag. Would that work? Yeah, I could maybe try both intermittently, like one and then. 
uh, keep an eye on your spell slots and how it, you know, how many you have, because you're going to have to, presumably you'll be casting it a few times to help you guys narrow down how long it's going to take you to find it. Um, yeah. But as far as, you know, combing the area, that's still a possibility too. Um, but basically you guys have the, you know, that as an opportunity. Orvin is still uh, back at the, uh, at the sails, or at the, the um, wheel rather. Um, and is just he's got a course heading basically northwest, just due northwest right now, um, which is the general area that you know it to be. But are you gonna are you casting it then? Are you gonna cast locate object? Yeah, I'm gonna cast it. Um, it doesn't say, but can I cast in level spell three slot? You can use higher level slots for it. Yes. Uh, just basically, you can use all of your what level two and level three slots for it. There's just no yes. additional benefits for upcasting except for just being able to use it it's still. Okay, so I could use it five times before I have to reset my skill slot. How long does it last? Up to ten minutes. Okay, all right. So you could just do it, you know, once an hour or something like that to help narrow it down. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, are they actually having this conversation, or is this outside uh, the game? Th that was probably out of narrative, only because mechanics usually are not... I mean, some of it, the, the parts that would make sense, like him describing the bag to her, for example... Um, and her maybe talking about how you know how long it lasts and how many times she'll be so, able to do it per day. So she wouldn't be telling him like, well, I can use a spell to get the general course, like the northwest. Artemy, would you have been? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Then that was audible, and, and Pogo heard it. Okay. So um, I could just be like, well, you know, if the captain's good enough, he probably can keep following a course pretty well. So you might not have to use all your efforts to keep doing that. Just as a heads up. And uh, Samson kind of kind of nods. He says, "I mean, the general course will certainly help, but a thousand feet—that's not—that's not real far. We'll see the ship long before we get that close. So, you know, if we ping it, you know, if you don't mind, uh, you know, pinging it once an hour or so, um, I guess that would probably tap out all you have, though, huh?" Yep. Would you be able to do it again tomorrow then, if it comes to that? Yeah. All right, then maybe. Maybe if you don't mind, once an hour might be a little more uh, hasty than we need because that would run us out of, you know, having the rest of the day with no no way of narrowing our way. Um, it, I mean, if you don't mind, at least tell us the direction that we need to go, and then you know we can we can inform the captain and, and kind of start our, our our course at least. Also, Pogo found a neat little chest over in this captain's quarters, and he assumes he's not going to really need it anymore. <laughs> so he's going to go ahead and check out this little chest and see see if the captain had any fun items. Uh, give me an investigation check. Oh, that's probably not going to be great. I think it's intelligence okay. based. I think I'm just going to cast it four times each day instead of five because I want to save one for uh, water breathing. Okay, you do have those reeds still too, so don't forget that. Yeah. But still, yeah. 25 hours of water breathing versus an hour of wreaths. Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, so you uh, digging through the chest while they're having that conversation out there on the deck. Um, it's it's papers. It's rolls and rolls and rolls of papers. All right. They're as soon as, you, as soon as you you know you can see it over the end, of course. But they're all maps. They're different uh, uh, right. for regions and islands and things like that. I'll go back out then and join. <laughs> this. I'll just keep looking over the side, pretending I'm not eavesdropping. <laughs> okay. Um, so do you do you cast that then, Fox? Yeah, I'm casting it once now. Okay. Uh, the region that you're, the direction that you're given is basically going to be a 90 degree cone until you get closer. Uh, and as you get closer, uh, sorry, you cut out that. It's going to be a 90 degree cone until you can get. Basically, the closer you get, the more it'll narrow. But for now, the okay. area, the, the direction that it's telling you is is, is due west. You've already gone north enough, northwest enough, basically, that you're almost due west is the direction that you need to go. That's that's the direction. That okay, so I'll go tell Oven and help them with the course thing, because I have actually said Okay. All right. Uh, he seems very appreciative and maybe even slightly flirty um, that he's, you know, uh, that you're up there with him by, by you know, just the two of you, um, but is kind of adjusting the course off to the left, and he asks you if you want to take the wheel. Sure. Oh, he, he kind of stands back, just lets you, you know, grab the wheel. And he, he's uh, describe giving you direction that you probably don't need, but he feels like he's being helpful. Like, oh, try to turn this a little bit and, and plant your foot over here to give yourself enough strength to, to get the, you know, behind the wheel and that kind of stuff. 
he's, he's very awkward okay. at it, but he's attempting to uh, uh, to flirt a little bit. Uh, it seems like, but he's uh, but you've adjusted the the ship. You're aiming straight at where that ping felt like, the direction that it's from, um, and and heading off that way. Uh, for Samson, Pogo, and Norok, uh, still there. The uh, you know what actually because uh, yeah we're, uh, we'll, we'll do this here. Um, I guess okay. Are you, what else are you guys doing? Do anything else for for this particular moment, or you know, the, the, at least the question of finding the thing is is answered at the moment. So what are you guys doing? Well, I am going to check the ship for any alcohol. I'm gonna go see if I can get a drink. <laughs> okay. Uh, there are casks uh, below decks that are, in fact, they're on the deck that you're heading down to right now. If you were to move yourself, by the way, outside of when we're outside of initiative, like you can move yourself around all you want. It's no big deal at all. Uh, you don't even necessarily even need to move your token. Like if you're looking at things and stuff, you can just tell me. Uh, you don't necessarily have to move your token around all the time. Not that that's more exciting this yeah, way. <laughs> that's it's totally fine to me if you if you do. I don't care. Uh, but sometimes also the maps aren't always 100% representative because they're they're essentially just art that. You know, I, I buy. Uh, sure. Sometimes they're not perfect, but yeah, there's casks down there um, that are clearly labeled as rum, um, and then there's a, a cask of bourbon that's a smaller cask. Can I bring the cask? Can I? How big are these casks? The like bourbon, full barrels. The bourbon cask is probably a foot and a half tall. Um, like a, you could throw it under an arm. It's going to be pretty heavy for you, but you could throw it under an arm um, and try, uh, you know, try to lug that up for you. It's basically yep. half your size. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to <laughs> lug up a uh, 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 cask to the top with everyone else. Okay. Because I'm guessing there's not a lot of people left alive on this boat anymore. There, are, there's eight. You've seen eight so far. Uh, uh, halflings and then the dwarf, Orvin. Is that eight, including these other people that fought off the guys? Oh no! There's, as others? far as the passengers, the rest of the passengers are dead. You guys are the only remaining passengers. <laughs> okay. Yep. Gonna bring the cask up here and see <laughs> if anyone wants to join me for a drink. Uh, Samson. Especially uh, Samson. <laughs> Samson kind of looks over his shoulder at you, uh, and he kind of chuckles. He says, "It's a bit early, but I'll suppose I'll have myself a nip." Nice. It is like 9 a.m. at this point. So. <laughs> yeah. And we just <laughs> murdered an entire group of angry fishmen. Yeah. I think we deserve a nip. <laughs> uh, so he, you, you, uh, you know, he grabs a tin uh, cup out of his bag, uh, and, and you, you know, pull it out of the spigot, give him a little sip, and he knocks. I also like to ask. Back. I don't know who this guy is, but I just want to refer to him as, "Hey, big man, do you want to sip off this thing? Just don't drink the whole barrel." <laughs> All right, I'll look down at him and say thanks, and then I'll say, uh. Uh, thanks for uh, the help back there, too. You were the only one that wasn't afraid to fight, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone else got murdered and ate by fish people, so... <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, I'm glad you did. Luckily, it wasn't gonna be me yesterday. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. So, again, thanks for the help, we appreciate it. Anytime. Well, no, not anytime. Let's not make a habit out of it, if you don't <laughs> mind. I'll just laugh and introduce myself and stick my hand out. My name is Norok, nice to meet you. I'm going to reach up as high as I can to grab his giant hand and say, <laughs> my name is Pogo. Uh, pleasure. I, I enjoyed uh, all of your friends. Seem to be very interesting people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh got a sorry. Almost Go ahead. Um, while I was transing, I would also have seen how uh, Sai's doing and asked her where she, like, how far she was towards the she would be just past the first uh, major road, the first main road. Okay. Uh, but she seems to be doing fine. Uh, did you did you keep her there? Because you, if you kept her in the dream for your trance, that's four hours less of walking that she would have had. Oh, no. I would have just checked in on her like for a few minutes okay. just to make sure she's okay, see how far she's gone, and whatever else, and that's it. Like It would have been like five minutes. Okay. Uh, she's very happy. Uh, she tells you that she almost caught a butterfly, and she's pretty sure she's going to catch one tomorrow uh, or later. Um, but otherwise, she's she's just having a great time with that walk through the through the woods. She doesn't get to Perfect. pretend to be a regular fox very often. So. Uh, Perfect. All right. So Norok and Pogo uh, had your little drinking introduction. Uh, did Norok drink as well? Yeah, I had a okay. just a. So I guess a standard size drink for me, I guess. Nothing very good, but okay. yeah. So uh, like a you... gallon. <laughs> half no, a half. A guys, liter and a half. Uh, Samson had like two shots worth, essentially, enough to kind of maybe take the edge off of the, the, the wound. Um, 
but are you, is, I guess, are Pogo and Orok, how much are you guys drinking? Enough to be a concern, to impair yourselves at all, or no? I'm having, no, nah, just one drink. Okay. Me too, yeah, but my my size of a drink, I guess, but the equivalent of one drink, yeah. Okay. <coughs> What's Sarah doing? Checking on the other halfling. She is staying inside, and she's just going to try and think of anything she has, may have read, or anything that could help with her. Give me... I like that. I like that Pogo really has nothing else to worry about right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just hanging out. Uh, your, your backstory hasn't given you anything else to yeah, be concerned with. Nothing so, to worry about. So you get to just have drinks and have I'm, fun. These I'm guys just are all enjoying the, the sea air. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Give me and uh, I'll tell you the DC is going to be damn near impossible for you. But go ahead and give me um, a memory check. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a natural one. It was a seven. The sevens of the ones look look really close from far away. So, uh, no. You, you, with that roll, you're racking your brain trying to think of what this might be. Um, the best you can come up with is you remember... It's been a little over a month now, but very soon after you saw Ozzy... Uh, you remember Ozzy, right? Yeah. So, very soon after you touched... Uh, okay, I'm going to say something here that Pogo does not know about, of course. So, so Justin... It's fine for you to know these things because this is you know, you're, you're part of the team, um, or will be anyways. But uh, uh, this is stuff that Pogo does not know. So these th you weren't there for this conversation, and you don't know who this person is. Um, but Sarah, in a conversation that you had with Ozzy um, right after you touched that orb, you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. He told you about somebody back then, um, uh, specifically the, the where you learned about Shadow Throne. Um, and what, why you're probably, you know, dealing with this right now. Uh, he told you about somebody then. Do you remember the name that he gave you? Other than Shadow Throne, Cotillion, Mumos, the name, you know, other than the other names of Shadow Throne, uh, specifically. He I told know you about somebody. I wrote a lot else. of it down, so I gotta go back so to the you would, So it's fine. Becky, you can find it in your notes there. Sarah is not able to remember it right now. Uh, but you remember having this conversation that is just just too far in the back of your mind with all the stuff that's happened since. Plus, that was you know almost a month ago, um, and it was kind of a you know relatively minor conversation that you didn't expect that this was going to be the problem. At that point, you only had two little pinpricks, you know, on the tips of your fingers of the shadowy stuff where it's now consumed half of your arm. Um, so it's not it's not top of mind. Um, but that's what you're trying to remember is that the, 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 the conversation you had with Ozzy because that seemed like maybe the most relevant information you could potentially recover at this point. Okay. Alright, uh, then for... Uh, everybody else, the, 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 the sailing continues. It's been probably couple more hours at this point um, of now sailing due west with, with Artemis at the wheel. Um, and there's there's a boom in the distance, just a loud cacophonous boom uh, that sounds like thunder. And immediately uh, the chanting of the, of the, uh, the shanties, rather, uh, of the crew stops. Um, and there's another booming crack of thunder. And it's, it's far in the distance, but it's audible enough that, that uh, it seems strange because it sounds way too close. adjust the volume level these were i had them dialed in before the session but i had to change some levels anyways so the the, the thunderous boom in the distance uh Artemis specifically when you look up it is it's very strange because the skies are pretty much clear like there are puffy white clouds up there um but not there's not cumulonimbus clouds they're not uh, uh dark enough clouds to be a thunderstorm um, and the sailors are all kind of looking around, almost nervous, a little bit unsure. Uh, the thunder continues, and it's kind of echoing back and forth in multiple cadences and pitches, um, as, if, as if it's coming from more than one source, like almost as if you were standing between two storms on either horizon. Um, but the sky is clear, except for these puffy white clouds. No, Certainly no visible storm. Uh, Artemy, give me a nature check, and Norak, give me a religion check. Can I cry? Can you cry? My rolls have been pretty oh, bad. Oh, <laughs> They've been fucking awful. 
Um, that is enough for Norok's roll. Uh, Norok, here. That's what it sounds like to you. Uh, Artemé, it's it's just too far away. You're not quite picking it up. You do recognize, though, that it definitely doesn't sound natural. That it's, there's something... I was just about to ask, is it some kind of spell or something or a curse? I don't know. It doesn't sound like a spell. Um, it, it doesn't sound like... Uh, it, basically, it doesn't sound like anything you've heard before. Um, but uh, Orvin comes storming back up the steps, like like as fast as he can with his little dwarf legs, uh, back up the, the steps to the to the quarter deck where you are. Um, and he, he yells out to the crew, he says, Relax, you whiny babies. Have you never sailed before? And they, they're kind of, you know, arguing a little bit. Uh, he looks up at you, he says, he says, it's just some kindly sea folk. They're, they're keeping the sun shining for us. Okay. Um, the crew begins to settle in. Uh, Sarah, you still hiding in your cabin? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm just staying there. Okay. Um, there's still some clear unease amongst the crew, as and Orvin doesn't change the course. He keeps he takes the wheel back from from Artemé just in case, um, and he starts kind of kind of you know steering it but keeping it on course basically. Uh, five minutes pass. Uh, th this booming continues to echo on, uh, and in the distance now off the starboard bow, you can just make out a small island, and you see in the distance here three figures that are surrounding this rocky outcropping. They're all facing each other, and they're waving their arms in the air. Um, and as you, as the ship gets closer and closer, they're growing larger and larger uh, as you begin to kind of sail nearby, like off of, off of the island. You're not getting too close uh, as Orvin's kind of, kind of steering the, the wheel a little bit. Uh, but as the favored wind gets closer and closer, you realize just how gargantuan these figures must be on this island. Um, they must be 30, 40 feet tall at least, uh, each with, with pale green skin and hair like seaweed. Um, and they're dressed in these long plain tunics and these belted leather sandals. Uh, one of them, as you guys are basically, off, it's off the starboard bow, so off, or off the off the west side, of the, the would be the top of the ship, off to the left basically of the ship. Um, he turns and looks at you. You see his eyes are, are just a, like a jade color as well, uh, as the ship is passing, and he's continuing this kind of ritualistic arm swing. Um, and the other two seem to take no notice to you guys. They just are, are ignoring you. Uh, but you're close enough to see that. I mean, if they were to reach out, shoulder level would be at the masts of the, the top of the masts of the ship. That's how big they are. Uh, so even though you're resting, you know, down in the waves, these these are just gargantuan uh, compared to to the ship here. Um, but you basically are just sailing by as these three giants are are chanting something, and this booming is their voice as they're chanting to each other. Do you guys do anything, or just letting the ship sail by? Uh, can I ask the, uh, uh, dwarf captain if he knows what those are? Uh, he, he chuckles. He says they're just sea giants. He says they're probably All keeping... All right. He says they're, they're, they're probably keeping a, a, a storm from gathering. He says they're great friends to a sailor unless you disturb them. And then it's all lightning bolts and tidal waves. Well, let's make sure we don't disturb them then. He kind of grins and chuckles. He says that's the plan. And he keeps the ship sailing on. You guys... Continue the search. How often are you, is Artemis pinging? Um. Mm. I'm only pinging four times a day, so. I guess Every twice before hours. lunch. Yeah, twice before lunch, and then. All right, Justin. All right, um, then Fox, do me a favor. Roll a d20, Fox. Just a flat d20. Okay. Um, Sorry, I was kind of dealing with um, Monk Aggro for a second. You're fine. Uh, all right, so it takes a, a few days. So after a few boring days at sea, of you guys kind of sailing back and forth, you get a little bit too far north, and then uh, using locate object, you kind of have to ping south and, and, and turn, you know, almost back around. Um, but you do kind of over back and forth, uh, make your way towards this, you know, this inevitable ship that you would eventually find. Uh, Justin, are you back? Uh, yep. Okay. All right, we're about to wrap up here in a minute, anyways. But a uh, few boring days at sea, uh, kind of going back and forth, getting too far north, and having to turn further back south, and so on. Um, uh, beginning to, to fear that the Emperor of the Waves has been taken under 
by whatever this tentacle beast that had attacked it in the first place is, uh, a crewman, uh, who is a halfling that you've learned is, is called Skurve, uh, shouts down from the crow's nest. And he yells, Ahoy! Uh, uh, Captain Orvin, sir! Uh, off the port bow, a derelict! And sure enough, you guys squint a bit, except Artemy, who can spot the details just fine. Oh, shit, I stole the thunder going, sorry. Let me turn those off. <laughs> anyway, uh, off the, the, the port bow, though, you guys can see... Um, it, it just just make out this looming shattered hulk in the distance. Um, Orvin adjusts course towards it, and you begin to kind of make out, uh, as you get closer, the external damage to the ship. Uh, the masts have been shorn off completely. Uh, they look like they've basically been snapped in half, uh, or rolled really low down towards the deck, uh, and they're all sharp and splintered wood poking out of the deck now. Uh, the deck appears to be clear of debris, and the side rails are all but completely gone, just as they've been broken off the, the, the deck of the ship, uh, as if whatever hit the ship was strong enough to just carry off the masts and the sails and the rigging and everything else along with it. Uh, Samson, now much better now, this has been a few days since, uh, his jaw hanging open a bit, he says, uh, the beast even tore off the figurehead. Uh, and sure enough, where most ships might have like a carving a mermaid or a bird or something on the mascot, uh, or on the, on the, the, uh, off the bow, the carving here has been hacked and disfigured. Um, Orvin begins to bring the, the favored wind to stall, though. Uh, he calls for the anchor to be dropped about 500 feet off of the starboard side of the derelict ship. Uh, and from this distance, you can see that the ship is really lighting, riding really low in the water. Um, the crew run about, raising sails, lowering anchor, all that stuff. Orvin says, I, I can't believe she's still afloat. Uh, sh she looks to have suffered some heavy damage, like a tidal wave crashed into her or something. To, and, and she's listed into port, too. That means her ballast has shifted, and as low as she is in the brine, my guess is a bilge, and maybe the lower decks are flooded. You guys, you still going to go board her? Sorry, I had to go take my pills real quick. What, what uh, did I just miss yep. for the last 20 seconds? Um, just basically you guys made it to the ship. Uh, the ship is leaning to one side. It's listing to port, so it's leaning over to the left uh, in okay. the water. Um, and and he tells, Orvin told you that by, because it's doing that, it means that the lower decks are probably flooded and the ballast has shifted, so it's going to sink. Like it doesn't, it may, it's, it, it's a matter of time. It may not be an next hour, but it's going to sink. So uh, he says you guys are still going to go border then? Uh, yep, I'm going to cast uh, Water Breathing and go check out the ship. I think I'm going to ask what's going on. <laughs> yeah, Pogo Pogo isn't automatically bought into this, so... Yeah, what are you, uh, what's going on? I don't know if that's going to be an awesome idea, guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what's, basically, what's I'm not saying anything because Samsung is kind of racist and I don't want to get him pissed off. All right. Well, I'm just kind of Samson telling it to the general, yeah. the general group. Samson looks yeah, but when you say that. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm not actually saying that. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to ignore him. Okay. Nora and Sarah? Oh, I'm just telling him. Well, you can go ahead, man. Oh, no, I was just saying, I'm just looking at Samson, too. I ain't going to put him off. Okay, well, I was going to say, there's just... Well, Samson can explain more, but there's something very important on that ship that's what we were looking for that's going to help the Crowblinders. And, well, actually, well, I'd say that out loud because I would, you know, I don't know. He was talking to Samson about that, but I'd say I'd say to help, uh, you know, what our cause here. So we do need to go on that ship, but you don't have to, but we do. Yeah. I don't know. Looks kind of fun. There might be uh, something worth grabbing on that ship. Samson, is there anything Samson is looks at you and he giggles. He says, "He says your folk usually like shiny things, right?" I don't know about my folk, but uh, personally, <laughs> I don't mind shiny things. Your folk. I'll, I'll take them if you got them. <laughs> what do you mean, you people? <laughs> <laughs> your folk. Come on. Uh, uh, well, as you guys are having this discussion, uh, Orvin shouts out to the crew. He says, "Lads, ready a skiff? Uh, Scurv, you and Two Tooth, uh, row our guests all on over." Uh, bring some rope and grapple so they can board. Uh, you see, by the way, there's no rigging along the side, so you're going to have to, you know, grapple onto the side and then climb your way up. Um, oh, I had already jumped into the water. You're just going <laughs> to swim there? It's a 500 feet away. <laughs> you are going to get et. You're going to get so et. There's going to be a, a shark frenzy. Elves love shark. Okay. Uh, sharks love elf flesh. What? Uh, <laughs> Sharks love elf, elf flesh. Uh, I suppose you could turn into a shark and swim your way over. But anyways, then Orvin shouts for the rest of the crew then to, to, to gather a, a, a skiff, yeah, a small boat, uh, to take you guys over. Um, so, If I see her jumping in, I'm just going to take the broom over and just tell her to get on so we can both just fly over there. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, you could both fit. I mean, under the 200 pounds, you'll both be able to fit on there. 
Uh, it's it, lengthwise, it'd you know, be a little bit close. Like Sarah, you might have to sit on Artemis' lap to be able to make it across, <laughs> just to be able to fit on the on the on the uh, broom to make your way over. But Norok, definitely no way. He's definitely gonna have to go in the boat. And Pogo is left behind as well. So Samson, Norok, and Pogo, the dudes, have to take the boat. Dudes, <laughs> it's a bro date. <laughs> it's it's uh, time to make a sausage boat. Oh, uh, what was it? God damn it! What was the um. Step Brothers, boats and, uh, boats and hose. Yeah, that's the boats and hose boats video. And hose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so we'll go ahead and we'll end the session there. But uh, starting next week, well, then uh, let me close this out.